Uh, can you guys hear me? Because I'm using this as new. And uh, I don't know if it works or not. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hey, already people here. Oh, hi, Tan. Hi, Jam. Hi, Darren. Hi, Ken. Hi, Jun Kyung. Hi, Gavin. Hi, Wesley. Uh, <laughs> good, good, good. I'm glad you can hear me. I am so sorry. I have been very remiss when it comes to videos. I know in the last week, I've only done like two, I think. I've been so busy. I mean, crazy. Uh, MCO is supposed to be the downtime, right? But no, I've been. It's been really, really crazy. Um, as you all know, I got that uh, BMW E12 uh, back. Uh, but a very good friend of mine, who the first person I actually told that I got it back, is a real classic car enthusiast. Uh, hello, Ahmad. Uh, yeah, he's a real classic car enthusiast. Guys, if you see his classic car collection, I've been to his house a couple of times. He's a very private guy. He does not like the publicity, so I've never been able to really shoot his cars or do videos on his cars. But if you saw his cars you will fall on the floor and cry because his classic cars are just amazing. And I'm so happy, actually, that he's taken uh, the E12 over. Why did I sell the E12 so fast? Okay, I'll tell you exactly why. Okay, this is truth and truth or dare, yeah? So you can ask me to tell the truth or you can ask me to do a dare. <laughs> um, I don't have enough funds, cash, to actually do up that car really, really well the way I want it to. It was like, um, let me give you an example. Let me, what's a good example I can give you? George Lucas, how's that? George Lucas made Star Wars Part 3 first uh, because he didn't have the technology to make in his vision, in his mind. He didn't have the technology to actually make Parts 1 and 2. Uh, so he made Part 3 first, as you know. And then when the technology was available that his vision could be realized, he finally made Part 1 and 2. So, I mean, that, that's, that's the way I'm looking at it. I don't have the means to actually do up that E12 the way I want it to be. Okay, and the same way how I found a new home, uh, hi Ashwin, uh, the same way I found a new home for my 126, uh, a lot of people, I saw a lot of comments, uh, they were kind of hurtful, uh, not from you guys, but there were some comments that were kind of hurtful, like, you know, uh, how could I bring myself to actually sell it, I thought I loved it so much, it's because I loved it so much that uh, I wanted the 126 to have an actual, hi Adil, Adli, sorry, um, I wanted the 126 to have a, a, a nicer home, basically, um, better than what I could do it here because the car is so big, uh, it doesn't fit in my porch, so I've got to park it outside. And every day it's in the sun. I use it only about once a week. Kasihan lah, the car. And um, I wanted to find it a good home. And that's the God's honest truth, I swear. I wanted to find the car a good home where it would be pampered in a park, uh, parked in a porch, out of the elements, you know, out of the sun, out of the rain. And uh, I interviewed four people is that three or four? Four. I interviewed four people before finally deciding on the current owner. And he paid for the, uh, for the transportation from my house, door to door. Uh, well, actually, not door to door, door to port. And uh, paid for all the transportation costs, which was actually quite surprising. I thought it would be a lot more. It was only 1,006. Uh, 1,587 all in, if I'm not mistaken. 1,587 uh, ringgit to send my, the car from my house all the way to Port Klang, and then from Port Klang all the way to Kuching Port. And he just picked up the car today, as you saw, in the community section. So I'm very, very happy. Uh, the car has actually got a very nice uh, new home now. So you could say the car actually upgraded from me instead of me upgrading to another car because its home now is much better than what I could uh, give it here. And it's the same way with the E12. Um, I know what I want to do with it. Uh, I knew, sorry, what I wanted to do with it. And then I did the math and I realized that, mm, if, okay, put it this way. If I were to keep that E12, that 525 E12, and it's a beautiful car uh, from 1979. If I were to keep that car, I would have had to sell off another two of my Weevils and uh, probably not be able to buy another car for a very, very long time. So did the math, uh, thought about it, thought about my, my viewers, you guys who have been here um, and gals who have been here uh, with me throughout this whole thing. And uh, I realized that um, there are still cars I want to explore. There are still uh, models that I want to go and see and possibly rescue and you know do another uh, restoration and, and video it. And uh, if I had kept that E12 and uh, done it up according to how I envisioned it, it would have been, mm, there's no way I could buy something else for a very, very long time. Uh, hi, Ken. Yes. Um, Hang on a second. Let me say hi to everybody first. Hi, Jared. 
Um, and Alan, sorry, my eyesight is getting really bad. My eyesight's only good when I drive, okay? When I'm reading stuff, it's really bad. Hi, Fami and Adiel and um, Shazwan. Hey, Shazwan, what's up? Yeah, I met you the other day, right? At, uh, at Ken Zone. Have I missed anybody? Sorry, sometimes when I prattle on, uh, you guys are typing stuff and then I have to scroll back again. But yes, ask me anything and I will answer. Ashvin asks, uh, how's the brick wagon? Ah, the brick wagon. The brick wagon is... Okay, that's another thing, you know. If the, the, thing, the things I want to do with the brick wagon. Uh, if I kept that E12 and started restoring the E12, E12 parts are ridiculously expensive and very hard to get. And even if you can get them, they're very expensive. Then the brick wagon would have had to take a back seat. Now, because I, I managed to sell off the E12 uh, for a little bit of a profit, I can use that profit now to actually do up the brick wagon. Yes, I made enough uh, to make to do up the brick wagon. And the brick wagon, well, buddy, uh, I, I feel like deleting the video that uh, that I posted some time ago when it first came home. This is not chewing gum. It's uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's blue tech, uh, super glue, duct tape, WD forty, blue tech, and uh, cable ties. These five things you want to play with old school cars. You you really need this. Yeah, I know it looks gross. I know it looks like something fell out of my nose, but uh, no, it's not. So anyway, yeah, uh, the brake wagon is actually going into RK's place once the uh, 124 comes back. Uh, the, uh, the 124. Guys, it's a first-generation pig nose 124. Yes, unfortunate. what a very, very unfortunate tagline for it, uh, nickname for it, but that's what they actually called it in Germany, the pig nose, because the, uh, that 124, the first generation, the grill is actually stuck onto the bonnet, whereas the later 124s, the, the grill was like inside the bonnet, so it was no longer a pig nose. Uh, just like the W210 is the big eye, small eye. Yeah, after that, the 211 didn't really... I was sort of big eye, small eye, but uh, it wasn't really that... Uh, I mean, the first one was, was crazy. I mean, when I'll be honest, when the first time I saw the one, the one two, the 210, sorry, when it first came out, I was like, <laughs> has Mercedes lost their mind? And I was not the only one. I was there, I was there at the global unveiling. And uh, a lot of people in the crowd were just looking at each other like, like this, like this, like... Like that, you know? And so I looked around and I was like, oh dear. But uh, yeah, so the brake wagon's going in once the um, once the uh, 124 is done. I think it should be done on Monday. So sorry, I've not been uh, posting a lot. That's why I decided to go live on a Saturday night. Yeah, sacrificing my, my Saturday night for you guys. Like I was doing anything anyway, but no, I wasn't. But uh, greetings from Kuching. Hi, Duane. What's up? How's it going? Hello. Yeah, so what are the questions? Uh, any good suggestion to repair sticky dashboard? <laughs> I'm driving a what? Zero eight Altis, two thousand and eight Altis. Kian, two thousand and eight Altis. Your your dashboard is already sticky. I'll tell you a funny story. The um, do you guys remember the Renault nineteen? The Renault nineteen, uh, and for, uh, to an extent, the Fiat Tempra. If you guys remember that one, uh, had dashboards that used to melt. And I remember there was one a friend of mine. Who's, uh, who had a nice display of coins on his dashboard. And I, I kept wondering, you know, I asked him, like, why do you just leave the coins there? And he goes, I can't take them out. They're stuck. His coins were stuck in the dashboard. So he just left it there as a, as a sort of like an art piece. <laughs> yes. Malaysian weather is that mad. It can melt dashboards. Uh, hello and good evening. Yes, Ellen and Jared. And okay, another question coming up here. Chris, may I know, this is from Lo. May I know how much to transport the car from West Malaysia to East Malaysia? Yes, uh, I just I just mentioned it already. So uh, it's about thousand five eight seven. I thought it would be a lot more, but it wasn't. And I was checking Facebook Marketplace today, just scrolling for potential potential weevils, and I saw that there are companies doing door to door service. A lot of companies doing door to door, roll roll service. They call it roll on roll off roll roll service. So check that out, and uh, you know find find a good deal. Uh, Fami, Chris, quick question. The most beautiful alpha, uh, my alpha, of course, bro, it's my alpha, yeah? yeah? The alpha is the most beautiful. No, of course not. I mean, I'm only saying that because I have one. Uh, to me, the most beautiful Alfa Romeo was the Disco Volante. Is the Disco Volante. If you're talking about newer Alfa Romeos, um, of course, that one is unobtainium. You can't buy a Disco Volante even if you wanted it. Uh, I did go down to Singapore with Bobby Ang. You can see the video. I mean, try and find it. I, it's not in the playlist. Sorry, haven't updated my playlist. Um, Bobby and I actually drove to Singapore to just go and see, not even test drive. I mean, no test drives were allowed. We actually just went over to go and see a Disco Volante and Bobby licked the tire. Yeah, Bobby licked the Disco Volante's tire. I licked something else, but I'm not going to say what. But yeah, we drove all the way to Singapore day trip 
this was of course before MCO, day trip to Singapore just to look at the Alfa Romeo Disco Volante is so beautiful, yeah, so beautiful. Um, more obtainable Alfa Romeos that are that I find very beautiful, the 159, of course, uh, very, very nice. I love the 156 too. Uh, the 156 is actually a very beautiful car. The hidden, the hidden rear door handle, making it look sort of like a coupe. Um, Alfa Romeo makes beautiful cars, and sadly, it's like twice we've been hit uh, with uh, with no importer. So currently, no Alfa Romeo importer. I heard a rumor that now, nah, sorry, I'm 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 trying to adjust my chair. I bought this new chair, and it's not so great. Um, I heard a rumor that NASA was going to take over the um, Alfa Romeo distributorship in Malaysia since they already have Ferrari and Maserati. So, yeah. Another Alfa that I, I think is very, very beautiful that uh, many don't really think so, uh, but you have to really look at the lines, is the um, Montreal, the, the, uh, V8, the V8 Montreal. Yes, so uh, mm, I just want to know, I'm 15 and I love the channel and projects. Ah, thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yeah, I've got quite a few uh, young viewers, actually. Anthony, my little brother, I don't know if he's watching this or not, but I actually met Anthony. He's the one where um, he, he, he messaged Atip and actually got the uh, Mercedes-Benz, the single solo Mercedes-Benz W123 wheel cover. Yeah, it's hanging in his bedroom. So, Anthony, if you're there, hello. Um, and uh, a, few, a few others as well. Um, uh, young viewers, you know, and it's great. And <laughs> the funny thing is, okay, I'm not saying you guys are kids, but every time I upload a video, uh, YouTube asks me, is this video made for kids? And I almost click yes because of you guys. But no, no, I don't. So I have to click no, it's not made for kids. Okay. Uh, what's the last car that I bought from Hi Guys? Hi Guys. Hi. Uh, the last car would be the 123. Oh, 124. Sorry. Ooh. I let something slip. No, I'm not looking for a 123. It would be the 124, the first generation 124 200. It's not even a 200E. Although it's an E class, there's no E on the body because E stands for uh, means injection, fuel injection. This, this car is a carburetor, a single Stromberg carburetor. HP Lee, hello. And uh, yes, okay, one more question here. I want you to make a review for Gen 2 because it's shiversimly. <laughs> oh, Adli. Come on, really? You want me to make you want me to make a video on the Gen 2? I'll tell you a funny story on the Gen 2. I was at the car wash near my house the other day. And uh, the uh, Gen 2 was there. I'm not gonna tell you which model it was, but it was a Gen 2. Shit, I just told you what model it was. Okay. It was a Gen 2. And when they were cleaning the when they were wiping down the car, uh, the, they opened the hatch, of course, to wipe the uh, the seams around it. And when they pulled it down, Okay, I'm, you're going to think I'm lying now, but I'm not lying at all. When they pulled, when the car wash guys pulled the hatch down, they didn't pull it at the center. They pulled it on the side. And when they pulled it down, I was watching. The whole hatch went like that. And then it came down at an angle. And then, of course, it wouldn't close. I mean, that's how bad that car was made. I'm sorry if out there, if you own a Gen 2, it's, it, it comes from the dark ages of Proton. So that, that, that's, that's all I can say. And... Uh, I'm trying to forget those cars, really. So I don't really want to. I think I think the the LMST was uh, that's it. You know, I I don't want to hate Proton anymore. I mean, I own three Protons, four counting the Savvy, which I have not delivered to the new owner yet, even though the car is fully paid up because of the uh, interstate travel ban. I can't deliver the car yet, so he's got my Corona, and uh, he's slowly falling in love. With the buyer of the Savvy is slowly falling in love with the Corona. And I'm terrified that he's going to say, hey, Chris, I think I'll keep the Corona, you keep the Savvy. <laughs> because I, I miss my Corona. Yeah, my, my Rona. Nesh, hello, hi. Um, sorry if you've already commented and I've not said hello yet because, you know, when I start to ramble, it just gets a, a little bit, uh, yeah. You, know, you guys know me. I, I, I tend to ramble a lot. Okay. Um, is the Centra B13 still in the garage? Yes, yes, it is. Um, who, asked, who asked me that? Uh, Jeng, Jeng uh, Lam. Yes, the Centra B13 is still with me. Unfortunately, I fucked up. Yeah, I did. I screwed up. Uh, Kenzo did a really good job fitting in the, uh, the seat. Thank you so much to Meng and Ken. Uh, unfortunately, because they had to use back the original Centra rails, the Centra seat is actually, um, the original seat is actually about this high off the rails. The bride seat is this high off the rails. So when I drive, my head, my enormous shiny head, is actually about this close to the roof. Yeah. If I hit a bump, I'm going to whack my head. I'm sure of it. So the seat is very comfortable. 
But I've got I've got to find another place, and actually I've already found another place where they can actually remove the whole thing, redo the rails, and lower that seat a little bit. Sadly, I can't put in the uh, original uh, seat that came with the car because unbeknownst to me, they actually ripped up that seat and used the railings. I didn't know they were going to do that, honestly. I thought they were just going to, you know, fit the uh, bright seat onto the current rails, but they had to use the whole underside of the uh, original seat to, the, uh, to use the bright seat. And uh, you would be amazed how difficult it is to find spare parts for a Sentra B13. There was actually one for sale, um, a parts car for like 2005. I, I, I was actually tempted to just buy the whole car for parts. But um, knowing me, I'll probably try and restore that, that spare parts car. Unless, of course, there's no documents and then, you know, it's really, really scrap. But a lot of spare cars or scrap cars or spare part donor cars out there that are for sale, they actually uh, have papers but they're just BER, Beyond Economic Rest Restoration, which means to do up the car, it's going to cost more than the car's value. Same reason why uh, a lot of savvies that are abandoned out there, it's the AMT, the Automated Manual Transmission Variant, because I found out that to fix the AMT is more than the value of the car. So that's BER, Beyond Economic Restoration. Okay, moving along. Okay, Adil, Adil. Yeah, also the, the W210 E55 AMG. <laughs> Who doesn't want the E55 AMG? I tell you, uh, the CLS55 AMG remains one of my dream cars. The CLS55 AMG, I've got photos of it where of me going sideways in, uh, in uh, Cyberjaya around the roundabout. Shh, don't tell anybody. Yeah, I was a bit of a delinquent when we were doing that shoot. There's so much power going through the rear wheels that it's so easy to light them up. And it's a, you turn off the traction control and you can... It got so well balanced, a, a CLS, you know, acting like a freaking uh, um, mini. So how many cars, June? How many cars do I own now? Wow. I think it's still less than 10. Uh, not counting the charade, which my dad's using at the moment. I think it's still less than 10. Um, I could be wrong. Yeah, I could be wrong, but yeah. You know what? I tell you what I'm going to do. I'll post it in the community section. Oh, actually, what I really want to do is gather all my cars together for a big photo shoot, but there's no way to do it around near my house. So I've got to find friends to actually drive the cars out. And um, let's do that when when I when the uh, brick wagon's done. Yeah, how about that? Um, I'm really looking forward to the new paint job for the brick wagon. Yes, I've decided to change the color. Uh, it's a surprise, so don't try and guess. It's a surprise. And uh, sorry, I'm just fiddling with the connection here. I hope you all can still hear me. Mm, okay, it came out a bit. Uh, so yeah, it's a surprise what the brick wagon is going to look like. Uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, let's see. What's the best car I've ever owned? Every single one of them out there is the best car I've ever owned. <laughs> yes, Vishal. Uh, Thomas, hey, Thomas, what's up? You had a busy day today. I'm sorry, Thomas, I'm so sorry. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't drop by today. It's been a bit of a mad day. Even though I've not uploaded anything, it's just been a mad day. And uh, yeah, it's one of those days that uh, I couldn't drop by. I will drop by again soon. Guys, uh, shout out to Thomas Yap at Autostar Official. Yeah, uh, there's one branch in Shalom and one branch in Kucha. You can look it up on uh, Google or Facebook. They do a magnificent job on 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 washing your car. And if it's just a normal wash, even they do a really really good job. And I don't even mind driving all the way to Shalom to get my car washed and uh, come back again. I actually have to pay more to to get my car washed there. Not you know no no toll, but you know petrol time and of course the cost is a little bit more. But it's so worth it. Uh, because my usual car wash here in Kalana Jaya, I'm not going to say where, because I don't want you guys to go there and try and get the same price. I go there so often that they actually give me a full car wash for eight ringgit. And uh, they do a decent job, but nowhere near as good as what Thomas does. So guys, please go visit Thomas. You won't believe how good your car can look. I mean, you saw the white knight. I've never seen that freaking car so white in my life. So there you go. When I got the car, it was not that white, I swear. Okay, uh, Vulture Tribe. Hey, Chris, are you going to buy the yellow Mitsubishi Colt? Very good question, Vulture. I, um, I was considering it a lot, but then I found out that that sticky um, power and uh, economy thing, they have to open up the gearbox. They can't, uh, they can't do it from the outside, so they have to strip the gearbox and find out what's going on. And based on owning a Mitsubishi Galan Super Touring, Mitsubishi parts for old school cars, yeah, I'm not talking about the new ones, are very, very hard to get. Very hard to get. Uh, almost as hard or maybe even harder than the Sentra. And so I really, really got to think about that one. Because the fact that it started up, that was, that was a big selling point already. 
the guy has just been lying there for a very, very long time. I actually saved the ad a year ago. No shit. I saved that ad a year ago. And I only just recently got to go see it. Of course, the advent of MCO last year and everything didn't help. But I only recently got to go see it. And I had to record it for you guys because I didn't expect the car to start. Honestly, I did. But they put in a battery and the car started. So that's a big selling point. And it's a cute little car. You know, it really, really is. I, I, I like it. I've not seen one on the road for the longest time. For the longest time. All right. Okay. 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 Let's see. Moving along. Hey, Tana. What's up? Hello, beautiful. Yeah, me? <laughs> if you stack back to back all the cars you have owned, would it be PJ to Clang or PJ to Epo? <laughs> Why stop at Epo? It might be all the way to Penang, brother. <laughs> okay. Oh, Muhammad Akmal. Yeah, my unboxing fan. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I've got some new ones. Really, I have. Ah, uh, damn it. I should have brought them out here. I should have brought them out here, but I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't. Sorry. I didn't know you were going to be online, but uh, this was just a surprise thing. And then, ooh, almost 100 people watching. Wow. Now I'm feeling self-conscious. So, oh, I got this recently. Check this out. Yes, I know it sounds uh, like a bad word, doesn't it? Michiba. 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 Sorry, Michiba. And these are cool. Uh, I'm sure you guys know about these already, yeah? But I'll just show them to you anyway. So, you know how old cars use filament bulbs, right? So the base, the base of the bulb, okay, I'm going to do a special here. So the base of the bulb looks like that, right? 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 Yeah. So that's old school. Okay, that's, that's, that, that's the only old school part about this bulb. Check out what, what the actual bulb is like. It's a whole bunch of LEDs. Can you imagine how bright this is going to be? I mean, just one of those fellas is very bright. So can you imagine how bright this is going to be? I got these in Thailand and I forgot I had them. I don't think this box is the actual box for it. I just used this box. I used this box to, to keep these safe. Then I lost the box and I just recently found them when I was going through my den. But this, I can't wait to put it into something and see how bright this is. That's all LEDs. Look at that. How cool is that? Okay. So anyway, I've got like, I've got like four of them. So let's see what happens on that. Right. Oh, Con is here. Hello, Con. What's up? What's up, buddy? How are you? Are you okay? Uh, all right. Let's see. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, 159. Oh, yeah, definitely. Any more questions? Hello, Johan. How are you? Hey, how's the uh, gathering? Sorry. I'm so sorry I couldn't make it. Uh, you know why? Uh, but I'm home. So that's all. That's all that matters. Uh, sometimes just being around, just being around helps. Yeah. When the when you, you know that kind of thing happens, right? Just 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 be around, and you know it's it's all good. Okay. Can you make a review on the Gen Two? Oh, sorry, I already read that one. <laughs> this thing just jumped up. Uh, Darren, you're only nineteen, but you look fifteen. Okay, cool. Right. Let's uh, move along. Hey, Daniel. Yes. Well, I don't know if you want me to reveal or not, but uh, I just mentioned about this uh, the savvy just now. <coughs> let's see more okay what happened to the toyota crown oh sad story uh basically someone bought it off me as is um and i have a feeling it's uh it was bought as a parts car even though the the um the it had documents uh the sad thing about the crown is that it was at least five years since the last road tax okay now if you know uh i'm sure you know because i've mentioned this be this, this before if a car has not had more than uh, three years' worth of road tax, it used to be one year, but now it's three years. Uh, if it's not had valid road tax for more than three years, and I'm talking about like three years and a day, uh, you have to get it B2 inspected. Now, B2 inspection is very, very stringent. Uh, B5 inspection is just to name transfer, so it's very easy. They just check the engine number, chassis number, the car hasn't been cut. Uh, they don't even start the car, but B2, they have to start the car, they have to check the lights, they check the horn, they check the wipers, they check the brake lights, they check the front lights, they check the signal lights, they check the lights, they check the windscreen, they check everything. So B2 is an extremely stringent inspection. The Crown would not have passed because I'll tell you exactly why. Although the engine could start, there was a crack in the windshield about more than about a foot long. About, it was about definitely about this long, okay, about a foot long. If you have a crack in a windshield that's only six inches and above, it will not pass B2. Yeah, that's how strict they are. So don't let your road tax expire more than three years because getting 
uh, it inspected, B2 inspected is a real pin in the yaw, in the horoscope. So yeah, that's that's what happened to the to the crown. It would have cost about quite a bit to do back again just to pass B2. And then there's, of, of course, the additional cost of the three liter engine. Nice engine, by the way, beautiful engine. Uh, but three liters worth and road tax for three liters is not cheap. The car could not have gotten um, classic status because uh, I don't have the original wheels. Um, so it would not have passed. So I could not get classic status for that. And I did the math again, uh, not just in my head, but actually uh, wrote it down. And the cost of actually doing up the car again was uh, a bit more than I was willing to spend. So somebody bought it. I shan't say who, but it, it was, uh, it's not one of you guys, but it's one of the viewers. Somebody actually bought it lock stock and two smoking barrels. Um, and I think he's going to use it uh, as a donor car to, to do up another Toyota Crown. So yeah, that was the end of the crown. Uh, Chris, any thoughts on the... Hi, Saren. How... Saren, how are you? Wow, long time no see. Okay, I'm going one by one, so please be patient. Yeah, I'm, um, I see this blue arrow here telling me there are more comments down there. So please be patient. Uh, Mert guy 101 what's up, bro? Uh, any thoughts on the N16 Sentra? Go for it. I love the N16 as well. Yeah, try and get a manual if you can. You can actually find manuals out there. You know what's another car that's really cool that nobody ever thinks about? The uh, Altis. Not... Not Altis. Altima. Nissan Altima. The Nissan Altima uh, Triple S that uh, was very um, came out before it's it was it was too new. It came out before its time. Like the Laser Links TX3, the Bubble Eye, uh, the design was ahead of its time. People were not ready for that kind of a design. So the Altis is a, a two liter, dual velocity cam, sixteen valve. Uh, there were manual variants because I remember testing the manual variant in Batutiga. And uh, there were also auto variants as well. Oh, funny story here. The, uh, the car actually has a hold button. As you know, the hold button uh, keeps the uh, one gear down. So it holds it in one gear so that you can accelerate more, get more revs out of it and everything. So I asked the salesman next to me, what's the hold button? Uh, and he said, oh, when you press this button, the car holds the ground very well. I shit you not, true story. When you press the button, the car holds the ground very well. Okay. Swear to God. True story. I told it to Chips. Yeah. I told that story to Chips yeah, after I got out of the car. And that's the first time I've ever seen Chips yeah, belly laugh. I mean, he was laughing so much, he almost fell to the ground on his belly. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a funny story. But yes, if you can find a good condition in N16, get it. Because uh, I think those engines will last forever. Uh, those Nissan engines. The, um, the B13 Sentra that I have, after the overhaul, the engine is just brilliant. Just absolutely sweet. And uh, that car's up for grabs. If anybody interested, just uh, email me, chris at evomalaysia.com, and we can, uh, we can uh, chat about it. Uh, okay, Muhammad Zairin, have you seen a 262 on the road? I'm going to post this in the community section just for you. But Yuan, E U A N, Yuan, uh, one of my YouTube viewers, just sent me a photo today of a 262 Bertone. Yes, the Bertone Coupe. Sitting outside Ken Zone, I think the owner went for McDonald's or something. And uh, but yeah, it was it was there. It was actually there. Two six two coupe. They are very rare. They're they're like that. Oh, that's the definition of a unicorn. Um, that 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 term unicorn for spotting a very rare car has been bandied around quite a bit. But uh, that is a real unicorn because those are super duper rare. I think you can count on one hand how many how many of those there are in this country, and including Sabah and Sarawak, I think. So yeah, that's that's how many. Uh, Godson, Godson Malling, which one is good manual car? Satria Neo or Iris? I'd go for the Iris. Nothing against the Satria Neo, but it also does come from that time when um, quality was not so, you know, not so great. Could have been better, could have been better. But the Iris is slightly better. I drove Hesri's Iris uh, premium manual 1.6, which they don't even make anymore. Oh, and for that matter, the uh, the new R3s, yeah, no manual. I mean, come on, if you're going to call it an R3, it's got to be a manual. Yeah, I noticed a lot of you were very pissed off about that in the community section. Sorry, don't shoot the messenger. I cut and paste the whole damn thing except for the editor's note at the bottom. That's it, okay? Yeah. So, yeah, I would go for an Iris. But again, like I said, don't, don't ask me, okay? You're not, I'm not the one buying the car. You go test drive both. You buy the car that you like, all right? I could never really get comfortable in the Neo. The driving position was kind of weird. And then when I put the uh, sun visor down, it was like that. Yeah, not a sun visor. It's, it's a freaking uh, vision, vi vision visor. So, yeah. Okay, let's move along here. Ashwin, what is Ashwin asking? Hey, wait, hang on. Did I miss anybody out there? Um... 
Fami, Chris, is there any possibility Proton might come up with a new hatchback like such as GTI? Uh, everybody was waiting for the Iris R3 to be a premium manual variant. I think that was no, that was no um, secret. They wanted, everybody was waiting for an Iris to come back with, an, with, an, with a manual variant, 1.6 premium, because as you know, manuals now are like the bastard child that nobody wants to talk about, the retarded brother that everybody keeps in the basement and you know, hides away. And during holidays, like once in a while, they let him out for an hour a day. So manual variants are only for the low-end cars, like the uh, Asia for the driving schools, um, the Saga, the bare bones basic Saga with the wheel covers and, and the rim bursi. So sadly, manuals, you are either buy the cheapest one they can have and then do it up yourself nicely, or you buy a bloody ex expensive one like a Civic Type R or Magana RS. It's such an opposite, you know, such an extreme in terms of new manual cars these days. It's sad. It's sad because I'm a big fan of manual cars. I mean, I only have now what what two, two automatic cars out there. Wait a minute, Waja, and the one two four. Yes, I only have two automatic cars out there. The rest are all manuals. Okay, I I'm a big fan of three pedals. I always will be. I think until until I can't use my left leg anymore, I will always be a fan of manuals. And I. I was hoping the Iris, Iris R3, if not the Saga R3, but at least the Iris R3, which has some kind of pedigree as far as sporty driving is concerned, whereas the Saga is more of like a, a family car, you know, a small family car. The Iris is more of a performance type car, you know, in my, in my mind. And uh, I was hoping they would come up with a, with a manual variant, but uh, no, it's just trim, trim level. Okay, I'm sorry if I, if I missed anybody, but uh, I'm going to go down through the comments now. Uh, I've seen forums talking about how the Volvo 240, this from Ashvin. Uh, I've seen forums talking about how the Volvo 240, 245 has a bad rust problem. And it was improved in the 740, 940 Gen. 940, yes, 740, not so. Uh, did the brick wagon have that issue and how did I fix it? Oh, hell yeah, the brick wagon had a rust issue. Um, I think I might have cataloged this in one of my earlier videos of the brick wagon when it was still patina gold. Um, I needed three new floorboards. Okay, that's how bad it was. Uh, I got the floorboards done. Um, another big rust issue was the foot, not foot, what is it? What's that thing called when you have a puncture and uh, spare tire. Uh, spare tire well, it's inside the car. It's in the rear of the uh, cargo area. There was a big hole at the bottom of it. Okay, there was a big hole there. And of course, when you drive, water gets splashed up. So more water went in, more moisture, more rust. I, I think if I had left it alone, the spare tire would have become a fifth tire on the road. No joke. Uh, so yeah, I got that done. And um, I should have just done all the uh, welding and everything and then taken the car to arcade to, to, uh, to paint. Yeah, but I thought I'd do it all in one place. And uh, yeah, paid the price for that. The welding was great though. Yeah, the welding is still... VJ, hi Chris, a big fan of the channel. Thank you, thank you. Thought of the new P2 bringing crucial safety. Thoughts on the new P2 bringing crucial safety aspects. The, the new Peridua, um, VJ is talking about the new Peridua that, that, that uh, you can check it out on paultan.org. Pictures of it as well. Looks pretty, looks pretty decent. And um, I think they're calling it the D4. The, the D4 or D5, I can't, sorry, can't remember. Bad with numbers. But uh, yeah, the, the new um, SUV, that small SUV that's coming in. Uh, I think it's very, very commendable, okay? Uh, the same way as how I feel that every motorbike, out, new motorbike out there, whether it's a scooter or a superbike, should come with ABS. Uh, unless you're a biker, you, you will not know how good ABS is on a bike until you need it. And you only need it once for it to be worth it. So yeah, I think putting in more safety, active and, and passive safety um, items in a car, in a new car, even though it's going to be a uh, price, you know, the way it is, which is uh, affordable, let's put it that way, affordable. Putting them in affordable cars is very, very commendable. So con congratulations to Porodua uh, and also Proton, of course, who have, you know, have put in quite a lot of uh, uh, safety systems in new active and passive safety systems in your car, in their cars, which I think is wonderful. Yeah, I mean, what kind of price can you put on a life? Uh, so yeah, I think, I think it's really, really good. It'll be interesting to see the actual on the road prices, but I heard they're going to be very, very, um, competitive, yeah. I don't think it's going to take away any uh, business from Proton. I think they're doing very well with the X50, which, you know, bullshit aside, um, and you shouldn't even, I shouldn't even say, you know, for a Proton, because for any car, any car, I mean, taken on its own, the X50 is a very, very good buy. Yeah, and I'll put, but again, I'm not buying it. So if 
you must go and test it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. You know, go test it for yourself. Okay, moving along. Uh, here we go. Uh, Tan, message retracted. Okay, why? You call me something, is it? You call me names. Uh? <laughs> uh, would you consider a new Iris manual? Oh, hell yeah, I would. If uh, You know, like I've, I've already told you, I've, not, I've told all of you, I've, I haven't bought a new car since 1998. My last new car was the Satria GTI. But um, a big fan of manuals. So the only thing is, okay, the only setback, yes, I would want it. But um, at my age, I don't think I can get a loan, you know, a car loan anymore. And even if I could, um, I kind of like for having no car loans for the last ooh, 98 to now, what, that, more than 20 years. So, yeah, I've not had a car loan in, in, in more than 20 years. And I've not had to apply for a car loan in, in more than 20 years. I, um, some may say it's stupid, you know, you know, how can you take so much cash and, you know, give to buy a car? I mean, it's not that much, okay? Sorry, to be honest, it's not that much. And uh, if you save up a little bit, think of how much you're going to buy a car cash. Think of how much you're going to save in terms of your, your monthly repayments with uh, interest. I mean, it's common, common knowledge that you buy a new car these days. If you take the full loan the first year and a half, two years, you're paying interest. Only interest. And then the worst thing, the worst, absolute thing, I was just thinking about it just now. You buy a new car and something goes wrong with a new car. And yes, things go wrong with new cars. You buy a new car. Something goes wrong, it's VOR. VOR stands for Vehicle Off-Road. That's when the manufacturer or the, uh, the dealership, the uh, service center, cannot fix the car in, in a day. They keep your car until they can fix it, and then you're paying monthly in installments for a car that is non-existent. And for me, for me personally, I don't use my cars that much. I mean, I don't use all my cars every single day. I use one car at a time uh, over several days. And yeah, I know, it, I'm not bragging, okay? But I can use one different car every day of the week. It's not a brag, it's just fact, okay? And um, if I were to buy a new car, what's going to happen to all my, all my Weevils out there? Uh, I'm, gonna have, I'm still going to have to use them. And then I don't use the new car, it's just sitting there, but I'm paying every month for this car. And I'm not using it. So, mm, yeah. So, sorry, I retract that. I won't buy a, the new Iris if it had a premium manual. I will wait for one of you to buy it and then buy it from you for less later. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, moving along now. Moving along. Thank you for spending um, Saturday night with me. 124 of you and 17 likes. Thank you so much. We've been going on, what, 38 minutes now? And time just flies, you know? Love you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you. It's a Saturday night and you're spending it with me. I'm really, really touched. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving along. Sorry. Um, Tan has asked, hi, Chris, can you talk more on antique car tax? Okay, I think you mean classic status? Sure. Classic status is wonderful, okay? Uh, the upside is that you're only going to pay 20% of the actual road tax. So let's say my take my 126, uh, which is in Kuching now. So Kuching folks, hello, if anybody from there watching, please watch out for BJU2868. She's my baby, but she's got a new lover now. So, um, yeah, classic status is wonderful. Uh, the 126 was 1,680 ringgit a year for a 2.8. Yeah, a freaking 36-year-old car paying that much road tax. So, once I got classic status for it, it was only 300 a year, which uh, is very, very, a lot more livable than 1,680 ringgit a year. The downside is, okay, it's very hard to get. First of all, you need that car certified Certified, are you taking notes? Are you taking notes? Okay, take notes, yeah? You need that car to be certified by an authorized, registered Malaysian classic car society or club. All right? So you need to be a member of that. They need to give you a letter saying that they have checked this car, and yes, it is a classic. All right? So that means not every car can apply for that, okay? Sadly, not all old cars are classics. I'll be very honest with you. Um, that Mitsubishi Colt, okay? I'll give you an example. It's old. It's not a classic. It's just old. So a classic car club has to register that car as a classic. They must say, yes, okay, it's a classic. So I'm sorry if you own a, a 25-year-old Nissan Sunny or something like that. Some cars are not classics. They're just old. This is not my making up, yeah? To me, all old cars are classics. But not everybody thinks the same way. Secondly, you need two other cars in your name paying full road tax, okay? That's the second point. The third point and usually the hardest of all is that the car needs to be in 100% original condition. Now, when I applied for classic status for my 126, I had the original wheels on them, which, because I'm such a nice guy and because the classic status needs to be renewed every three years, I have given my original 126 rims 
to the new buyer. I actually put them, all four pieces went into the boot. Yes, that's how big the boot of a 126 is. All four pieces of the original 126 alloys went with the car. So the next time he has to apply for classic status, he has to put those wheels back on the car because um, the BBS on the car now, even though they are BBS RS, basket weave, and they look very classic, they're not classic because the car has to be in original classic shape. If the car has ever had an engine transplant, not eligible. If you've changed the steering wheel to a Momo or a Nardi or something wooden, like, you know, the uh, Nardi, Nardi, uh, yeah, the Nardi wooden steering wheel or something like that because it looks good and it matches the, the wood, fail. Cannot. The car must be in 100% original condition. Uh, I think they let you get away with if you change the head unit. I'm not sure on that though. But yeah, I think they let you get away with if you change the ice, the, um, not the internal combustion engine. This ice stands for in-car entertainment. Okay. Okay, moving along, moving along, moving along, moving along. Uh, what? E21, Farhan, you're asking about an E21? I had an E21. Oh, the E21, the Baby 3 Series, yes. The E21 is uh, a very basic car. It's the most basic BMW you could ever buy, ever. It's even more basic than the E12. It has nothing. <laughs> nothing, really. It's a BMW body sharp nose, uh, two round headlights. So they even skimped on the headlights. They couldn't even give you four round headlights in front. They only gave you two. But it's a wonderful car to drive. I tell you why. Um, because it's so basic, no driver aids whatsoever. You are so engaged. in It's like the Alfetta. You are so engaged in driving the car. You cannot do anything else. So, you know, forget about like play, playing with your phone. And, and, and trying to drive an E21. You will die. Okay, how is that? Yeah, so if you can find a, a, con a good condition E21, get it. But they're very expensive now. Yeah, I sold mine uh, many years ago before I started my channel, actually. I sold, I sold mine um, to a Dato, Dato Allen, if I'm not mistaken. He had two other E21s, and he's an E21 collector. And he has a, like a factory somewhere in Sungai Bulo or something like that. So my car is parked there. Okay, moving along. Let's do a garage update. <laughs> Trust her, GTR. Let's do a garage update. Stay tuned, stay tuned. Definitely gonna, definitely gonna do that, okay? Okay. Sorry, June, if you own a, a Gen 2. I hope it's in good condition. I mean, I hope you've been maintaining it well. I know it's not easy. So really, tabet you if you're keeping it in good condition, really, because even when you, um, that car had a lot of uh, misgivings. I had a lot of misgivings about that car. A lot of short, shortcomings on that car. Uh, hi, Chris. Just joined. Hope you're doing good. Thank you, Amir. I appreciate that. Bala Krishnan. Hi, Chris. Is maintaining an E5, E39, M5, E39 difficult in Malaysia? Nope. There's always Said. Said in Old Town. He can take care of any car. So if you can find a good condition, E39, M5, uh, and it's in your within your means, by all means. That's what I said. If you have the means, by all means. You're not going to regret it, really. Uh, this is the first time I see you live on YouTube. I've done this a few uh, times before, uh, Adli. I have, uh, but I've been remiss. You can actually check. I think somewhere up there you can see there are previous live videos. Mm, okay. Faisal says, I know your usual car wash. The 7-Eleven. Yes. Well done. Hi, Reading Worm. How are you? Uh, Muhammad Aslam. Um, what's this? Uh, what do you think of the Fiat Coupe 20 valve? I love the Fiat Coupe 20 valve. Did you know that's a Chris Bangle design? Yes, those slashes at the side before he went into flame surfacing, he was a slasher. So yes, the the the, uh, the Fiat Coupe uh, 20 valve is is, is amazing. Um, don't tell anybody, okay? But straight out of the box, stop freaking standard. That car can do 270 because I did it on the way back from Penang. Yeah, 270 kilometers an hour. Stock. Yes. <laughs> One thing, I'm not bluffing, okay? I, I swear, you, you're going to think it's unbelievable, but really, it, I'm I tell the truth, especially when, when I'm live. <laughs> uh, Fiat Coupe rebuild, please. I would love to, but the only one that I want is the five-cylinder 20-valve turbo, and those are still very expensive. Yeah, very expensive. I think handling one Italian at a time is already a lot to ask for. I'm handling two. Please don't forget, I still have a Fiat Punto Cabriolet. Okay, how are you? I hope you're in a nice day and good health. Thank you. Thank you very much. Adley. Yes, I think I'm, uh, I'm, I think I'm okay. But okay is relative, isn't it? 
Uh, Tommy, sorry, I don't think I'm beginning a, a, a Fiat Coupe anytime soon. Hi, Victor. Hello, Sam. Love your Saga rebuilt. Ah, thank you. I drove the Saga out today. I've been driving the Saga a lot, uh, quite a bit, actually. I actually took the Saga to Thomas's place the other day, and um, he did such a magnificent job, you know, washing the car. But uh, yeah, so I've been driving the Saga a lot. It, it just drives so well. I mean, I'm seriously amazed. Okay, it's not 100% original. It doesn't have the Orion engine anymore. It's got a 1.5 megavolt engine. I, I made that very clear. I'm not, you know, I, I got the car like that. But I think that is one uh, upgrade that I can live with. It's still a Proton engine. It's a 1.5 megavolt engine in an Orion body. And that was, to me, that was important. I wanted the Saga from 1985 when Proton was established as a car company, as a, as a, car com as a company in Malaysia, okay? 1985 was when they were born. The first car they came up with was, was the Saga. I wanted a 1985 Saga. And the only one that I found in decent enough condition to consider restoring was all the way up in Sungai Petani Kedah. But I drove it back and the car did not die even once. Even before I started doing anything to it, the car drove back all the way with no problem. No problem. And uh, I was so impressed. And I think I've, you've heard me say this before. I want my cars to look as good as they run. So I already decided then and there I was going to spend no expense on the Saga because she brought me back from Sungai Petani Kedah all the way to the, my front gate. Not a single problem. And so, yeah, the Saga is um, it's ongoing. I mean, I'm done, pretty much done. But every, every now and then I find something else to do, I will do it. Uh, yes, hi, Victor, Sam. Okay, gone through that already. Low. Hey, Chris, any Civic EF hatchback on sale around PJ? Just, <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at the fact that I'm so happy I didn't buy that Civic EF from Kenzone. Really, honestly. 1,500 ringgit for two pieces of freaking plastic signal lights that go into the bumper. That is bullshit. Okay, that's just bullshit. I can't believe that. And you know, out of principle, I would never pay that kind of money for two pieces of plastic with a, two bulbs inside, one, one, one each. Thousand five, come on. I know there are a lot of civic enthusiasts out there and I respect them greatly. Their cars are beautiful. But whoever is hoarding parts and selling them at a thousand percent profit, shame on you. You know, you shouldn't do that. You're killing the used car business. You're, sorry, you're killing the restoration business. Enthusiasts like me, who, who do not want to just flip a car for profit, who actually want to build, a, rebuild a car nicely and put original parts and buy original parts, you're going to charge me 1,500 ringgit for two pieces of plastic signal lights. Shame on you. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Hello, Paul. What's up? Okay, Daniel said, please do mention, yes, if you guys are scrolling through and you see a guy here by the name of Daniel De Costa, he is the proud new owner of my savvy. I'm so sorry, Daniel. It's not my fault. MCO still in effect. No interstate travel allowed. I cannot deliver the car to you. I hope you're enjoying the Toyota Corona. Um, I hope she's serving you well. Uh, in the meantime, I'm taking care of your savvy, as you saw the other day for a wash at Thomas's place. And uh, as soon as interstate travel is allowed, I will meet you in Juru. Okay, for that matter, anybody watching now from Penang, if you want to meet us in Juru, come over. Watch me hand over the, uh, the uh, savvy to uh, Daniel and uh, bring back my, my lovely Rona, my Corona. So, okay, moving along. 137 people still. Wow, you guys are still here. Thank you, thank you. You all don't sleep. Right? Sorry, what? 10.30, eh? Okay, hi, Sean. Hi, Sean Jay. What's up? Okay, hey, Chris. Do you, are you interested in an AE86? Because it's my dream car. Of course. Who isn't? AE86. Hello, Tofu car. But, thanks to Initial D, the prices went through the roof. You know that car used to be about 15, 16K, AE86? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's 100,000 ringgit. 100,000 ringgits for an AE86. Come on. Come on. No. it's. I mean, it's a lovely car, yes. But it's not worth 100,000 ringgit. Are you mad? Sorry, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, could you do a video on how to get classic car status? Thanks, buddy. Sure. Sure, I'll, I'll do another. I, I mean, I went through just now. I don't know if you heard it. No, I went through what it takes to get classic car status. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I can, do a, I can do another video on that. Okay. How about Nissan Sunny? Yes, I love the Nissan Sunny. Like I said, unfortunately, 
Um, no, not unfortunately. Uh, why, why did I say unfortunately? Oh, yes, because I said old cars are not all old cars are classics. See, the thing is, it's not up to me to you know uh, certify a Nissan Sunny is not a classic, a Jaguar type E Type is a classic. It's not up to me, really. It's up to a local registered classic car club to deem a car whether it's really a classic and worthy of the uh, classic car status in which to get 80% uh, discount. Then again, with a Nissan Sunny 1.3 or Rare 1.5, why do you want classic status? <laughs> Your own tax is what? 80 ringgit, 90 ringgit, even normal? You want to pay what? 50 cent, is it? <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, Nissan Sunnies are wonderful cars. Uh, I love them because they are honest, no frills. Uh, if you see a young guy driving a Nissan Sunny, I guarantee you it's a hand-me-down from his grandfather, not just his father, yeah? Probably his grandfather. Maybe, because it's 2021, great-grandfather. Because Nissan Sunnies often outlive their owners. Sorry, it's true. The car will outlive its owner. I'm sorry, but it's true. Okay, I speak the fact. Truth. Okay. Um, Lee the Bear. Hey, what's up? Hi, Chris. Love the channel. Thank you. Just curious, what kind of music do you listen to when driving and the cameras are off? When the, or without the cameras on. Yeah, because if I play music and I drive, YouTube gives me a copyright strike. So I can't listen to music when I... I tell you, uh, straight up, I love 80s music. A little bit of 90s music, yes. But I love 80s music. I've got a, I've got a thumb drive full of... Uh, Full of 80s music. In fact, I think I've got it here somewhere in my little box of... Full of 80s music. I've, I've made copies of this um, and I put one in each of my cars. But I don't, as you know, I don't listen to music very often when I drive. I like to listen to the engine, uh, sounds, because I, I really do feel that the car is trying to communicate with me. And uh, so I don't listen to music very often. But I have a philosophy that if there's something in the car, if there's a player in the car, it should work. So... Most of my players, like the one even in the Alfetta, which I've never used, and it's a very old uh, Kenwood or Blaupunk or something like that. By the way, Blaupunk means blue spot. I thought it was so cool a long time ago. My player is a Blaupunk from Germany. But it just means blue spot. You know, like, uh, like Maserati Quattro Porte. Maserati Quattro Porte. So fucking beautiful, the name. Eh? Quattro Porte means four doors. Uh, anyway, so yeah. Um... I tell you what, though, I'll give you, I'll give you a little bit of a hint. When I want to drive fast, when I'm alone, and I want to drive aggressively, because you know, Le Pas Garam and all that, I listen to Top Gun soundtrack. Yeah, <laughs> Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins. Ah, oh, that's a nice song to drive fast to. I tell you. Yeah. Okay. How's my waja? Uh, at least I'll just fine. Thank you. Um, the only reason I ask is because I remember you make a video about the used car review of the waja. For me, it's crazy for Proton to be. <laughs> Whoever came up with. <laughs> Asia's answer to the BMW 3 Series. That's the full thing. Not just Asia's answer to BMW, but it was Asia. The Waja was Asia's answer to the BMW 3 Series. Oh my God! I don't know who came up with it, but whoever approved it, even. Uh, never mind. Let, let, let's move along. Okay, Jonathan. Um, for a hundred k budget, which drop the top car would you go for Z4? Yeah. Definitely, like the one my cousin used to have. Oh, sorry, the my cousin, the, the one my cousin had. He had a really good deal on it. It was about 100k, 113 if I'm not mistaken. Now they've gone up. I met the previous generation one, the one that's slightly smaller. Uh, yeah, with a flatter backside. Yeah, I like that one. Oh, that that that's that's a nice roadster. I still like that car very much. Uh, my favorite drop the top from from a BMW though is the 507. Um, of course, that's unobtainium. Um, another on unobtainium, although some people still have it, but not here in Malaysia because they were only left-hand drive, the Z8. I love the Z8. Okay. Right. Uh, when are you going to buy a BMW E38? You know, I've been scoping E38s, but uh, again, it's the same with the E12. I Parts are going to be very expensive, and I don't need that big a car anymore. I mean, I had a big car. I sold it, the 126. So whether I want to get back into another big, you know, German car, um, not so soon, maybe. I, I'm kind of enjoying playing with local cars and, and, the, and Japanese cars, and of course, a few Continentals. But uh, yeah, I think uh, it'll be a while before I consider getting an E38, although I like them very much. Yeah, and not because, you know, Pierce Brosnan and James Bond used one, but uh, there we go. Anyway, moving on, let's see. Uh, Chia, loved all your work. Thank you so much. Any love? For classic mini ah okay as a weevil 
And uh, if I suggest a drop the top manual, it'd be great. Drop a manual, drop the top. Manual, drop the top. You true. MX5. Yeah. If you can get, and Bing will be very happy with you if you got that. Um, classic Mini. I, I like Classic Minis, but I'm not a huge fan to actually uh, buy one. My, my cousin used to have one, um, Rafiq. And uh, it was just at 850, and he's taller than me, and he fit. So I know I could be very comfortable in a Mini. Um, but it's the same with the VW Beetle. You know, I, I, I like looking at them, and uh, I respect the people who, who actually keep them alive and keep them going. And, uh, but I still haven't had that desire to get a, a, a classic Mini or a, or a, a, a Beetle. It's just, it's just, you know, if I want to get a Beetle, I'd get a yellow one and drive at Karak at night. Yeah. Ethan, hello, Ethan. Uh, hope everyone is having a good night. Ah, I hope so too. Thank you for joining me here. It's it's been about almost an hour, four minutes to an hour, and you guys are still here. Okay, I don't know. Should I keep it to an hour, um, or you you want to keep going because you know it's Saturday night and I don't have anything to do because I'm old. <laughs> uh, Demet, what's the engine swap scene in your area? Where are you from, Demet? Uh, the engine swap here scene here is actually quite rife still. I mean, I've been going through um, Facebook Marketplace and and Muda, and I see a lot of. Uh, I saw an E36 with a 1JZ. Um, yeah, still, still a, quite, quite a bit. I think I saw a one, two, Mercedes 123 with a SR20 in it or something like that. Yeah, so it's still a lot. Personally, I'm, I'm not really into engine swaps, but I can't, I can't say I've never done it because I actually owned a Volvo with a Supra engine a long, long time, a long time ago. Yeah, it was a 1G GTE um, in a Volvo 240, and it was fun. <laughs> oh, I tell you, it was fun because the 240 is so heavy. Uh, the engine with that kind of power, uh, it felt really, really stable even at stupid speeds. Yeah, so it was yeah, it was a lot of fun. But um, for my own cars out there, I don't think I'd ever do an engine swap. No. Anyway, okay. Let's see. Silent Master. Oh, long time no here. Hi, Chris. Happy to see that you got a one two four. Uh, the early gen one two. Yeah, first gen. Hope to catch up with you on the road trip soon. Me too. I miss. I miss. Uh, I miss road trips, man. Really. With your blue W124 200E manual. Nice. Yeah, a lot of people are looking for W124 manuals now since I sold mine in uh, late 2019. So, yeah, hope I saw a few on Muda. You can go have a look. Or oh, was it Facebook Market? It's one of those two. 200, 230E manual. Yep, saw it. Uh, Arvin, hurry, Chris, sorry for being late. Ah, it's okay. No problem. There we go. Um, oh, James, hasty. Hi, what? What's, what are my thoughts on EV cars? Okay, that's a damn good question. EV cars, I'm all for the fact that um, they're better for the environment. Yeah, insofar as no emission uh, emissions are concerned. Uh, let's not go into how EVs are made, as what's required from the for the batteries and all that. But I think the most important thing um, to owning an EV, for the record, I would want a Renault Twizy. I love the Renault Twizy. I've got a video of a uh, few videos actually, or maybe just two of me and the Renault Twizy when I had it on test. Uh, I did one with Bang as well, and she sat behind. And it was so much fun. I actually really like the Renault Twizy. So if I ever were to get a, uh, an EV, it would be the Twizy. Sadly, it's not allowed on toll roads. Uh, it's only for, you know, around this area. You can't go on the highway with it because it has a whopping top speed of 86 kilometers an hour. So if you can't do the limit on the highway, which is 110, you cannot go on the highway. I don't know if you all knew that, but if your vehicle cannot do 110, you got to stay off the highway. So anyway, okay. Um, oh, sorry, I haven't finished. EVs, I think the most important thing, it's a no-brainer. The infrastructure needs to be there. We do not have the infrastructure just yet. Yeah. So slowly, lah, as they say. Uh, Zahuruddin Ali, okay. Uh, do you have any plan to restore VW Beetle? No, I think I just covered that. Sorry, bro. I'm not really into the Beetle. Yeah. I love Herbie. I think he's the coolest, coolest car character ever, but uh, not personally into Beatles yet. I never say never. Yeah? Okay. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Eugene, new car stuck in workshop? Only happens to VW. Don't laugh so bad. Hey, I, I still love the Scirocco, okay? It's still one of my favorite new Volkswagens. Uh, maybe because it doesn't look like any other Volkswagen in the Volkswagen range. You look at the front of a Scirocco, it looks like nothing like the other cars from the Volkswagen range. Okay. Uh, happy Chinese New Year from Yong. Happy Chinese New Year, bro. Thank you. Alan Tan. Chris, talk a little bit on the 124 wagon. Uh, bye. There's one going for 
66,000 ringgit on Muda, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was a red one. Um, if you can find a good condition one, buy it because uh, prices are going crazy. The, my XW123 wagon is even more expensive now. I should have held on to it. That's one of my small, yeah, you know. Uh, like I, I always say, don't regret, but that's possibly my only regret when I sold my W123 wagon because it was gorgeous. Uh, Darren from Auto Detailer detailed it for me and he liked it so much after he had detailed it. He actually took photos of it in his bat cave. Um, I don't know if he has the photos on the wall or not, but uh, that was a magnificent car. And if you get, mine was manual too, 200T. T not for turbo, yeah, T for touring. Um, 200T. And it was a five-speed manual. Five-speed manual. Okay. Um, hi, bro. Um, MRT MHD. MRT Mohammed. Hi. Hi. What's up? Vishal. Vishal Production. BMW, Merck, or Audi. Which one do you like the most? Good question. Um, Three-horse race. Uh, I would say two would be tied and one would be a non-performer. You, you, you decide which are which. Uh, Eugene K. Love your UCR support. Thank you so much. Hi, Chris. Uh, big fan here from Daru. Hello, Daru. K. Lumpo. Well, Kuala Lumpur is talking to me. Hi, Chris. What's up? Hi. Uh, Trust GTR. You just answered all of my questions. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad I did. I'm just going through all of them really quickly now because it's already 11 o'clock and I don't want to keep you all. No, it's not. It's only 10.45. Why? Why did I think? Oh, it's because more than an hour. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. W220. Darmesh Ramesh. Oh, W220. I think. What, is that the S-Class? Uh, the one with the air suspension? Mm, I would stop at the 140. I, the Amatic terrifies me, actually. Um, any Mercedes, old school Mercedes, uh, relatively new Mercedes with um, Amatic kind of terrifies me because I lead the Benkel life. Hashtag Benkel life. I've been to a lot of Benkels that specialize in Mercedes Benz. And um, I'm just going to leave it at that because uh, I've not heard very good things or not seen even with my... And I've seen with my own two eyes um, the not so very good things like uh, the airmatic failing. If you see a if you see an S class with airmatic and it's sitting on its haunches on the tow truck, that's a very big bill. It's huge. It's a huge bill. And uh, yeah, so I would I wouldn't. Uh, mm. I've been looking at 140s though, W one forties. I think the last of the big tank like Mercedes Benzes, absolutely unnecessary to be that big. But because they had the balls to make it, I should have the balls to buy it, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, hi Chris, you China? Ke? Yeah lah, saya China tapi semua kita Malaysian kan? Yes, my father is Chinese, my mom is Portuguese, Indian, hence the year-round tan. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Jonathan, hi Chris, happy Chinese New Year and Gong Hei Choi. Thank you bro. Roshan, hi Chris. Hi, what's up Roshan? Andik, hi Chris, just saw your video, how's your saga and Satria? They're both running well. Um, they're both running really, really, really good. The Satria was pretty much a buy and drive. I haven't had to do much except for that day when I showed the video. There was a funny sound coming from the engine and sure enough, I think it was the uh, uh, Conrad bearing. Yeah, so that was like a $700 bill, I think it was. Yeah, that was the that was the last thing. The Saga is just running really well. I just I covered it just now as well. I've been using the Saga a lot lately. So yeah, it's, it's just a lovely, lovely car. It really is 30, freaking 35 years old, 36 years old this year and running so well. Uh, Okay, sorry, I clicked wrongly and it went upstairs. So I need to go back downstairs again. Hang on. Okay, here we go. Adam, if I buy an old Land Rover Defender, can I register it for classic status? No, sorry. Cars only. MPVs, SUVs, 4x4s, not allowed. I forgot to mention that just now. Thank you for the reminder. Yeah. Okay. Um, Adam, hi, Chris. I have my eyes on an E24 manual. Did you see it on Muda, Adam? Because I saw it on Muda as well. Yeah, go for it, man. Go for it. Uh, no, I've not owned the E34 before, but I think it's uh, E34 before. Hmm. But I think it's going to be very easy to maintain. And of course, there's always side in Old Town. He's a magician with uh, E30s, E36s, E46s, E34s, E39s. So, you know, before I bought a Citroen ZX, I actually scoped around for the proper mechanic. I went to four different mechanics to talk to them uh, about uh, the Citroen ZX 2.0 Volcan. I wanted the 16 valve 2 door, but I couldn't afford it. So I bought the... Uh, I was looking at the uh, two-liter Volcan photo. And before I bought the car, I actually went to interview mechanics. The same way I interviewed people before I sold my 126, I, I went to interview mechanics. And maybe that's one piece of advice I can give you all. If you're looking for a car that you've had no experience with, ask around with your friends or join a Facebook club that has, uh, that has uh, dedicated to that particular model. Ask around 
and uh, find out about the car, uh, it, its misgivings, its pros, its cons, you know, stuff like that. And the most importantly, find a place and a person that you trust, a mechanic that you trust, that you can actually rely on and who won't when something goes wrong. The worst possible thing you can do is go to a workshop that you don't know and say, I don't know what's wrong with this car. Can you just fix it? <laughs> don't ever do that. Even if you don't know anything about the car, even if you're not mechanically inclined, never say, I don't know what's wrong with it. Can you, can you find out? Oh, okay. Asking for trouble. Really asking for trouble. But yeah, try and find a mechanic who can actually uh, do the car. So yes, back to the story on the Citroen ZX. I actually went and interviewed four different work workshops that said they knew about the Citroen because these cars are specialized, yeah? Just as how Abang Ramli is the guy who tuned the carburetors on my Alfetta so beautifully. I went to interview these four mechanics, these four workshops, and came away only trusting one because what I'd done was a bit naughty. Um, I actually knew what was wrong with the car. I wanted to see whether they knew what was wrong with the car. So I asked them and said, what's wrong with this? And I actually knew what was wrong with it. And I wanted to see if they would tell me the truth. And only one did. So yeah, scope around and uh, find out, find out, find somebody you can trust um, and be his best friend, really. I mean, you, you know what? If he's willing to go uh, to see the car with you, pay for his time, okay? Don't just say, I blanja you, te tarik. Please, I, got, I get a lot of people say, hey, Chris, come with me to see a car, I blanja you, te tarik. Hello, you should be able to blanja me a freaking te tarik for no goddamn reason whatsoever, okay? So pay for his time. It will be better for you and beneficial in the long run. And don't say, hey, I buy you te tarik, you come and see this car with me. Pay for his time. Time is money, folks. Why do you think there are so many people out there who, who want to just buy a restored car from me? <laughs> they don't have the time to do it. And that's no, that's no right or wrong for it. It's just time. Time is something you cannot get back. So if it means paying for someone's time, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you're good at something, never do it for free. <clears throat> Sorry. Becoming a fortune cookie at 11 p.m., not a good sign. But let's move on. Okay. Um, okay, okay, okay. Hi, Aslan Din. How are you? Um, Muhammad Zamir Asman, hi, love your content. Thank you. Your advice and fresh on fresh grads who is really interested in your style of automotive work. Don't, 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 don't. I've been doing this for going on three decades already, okay, uh, in the motoring scene. And um, coming out from a, a regular nine to five, uh, to do my own channel, to do my own thing, has proven to be very challenging. It's great having my own time. It's great being able to work from home. Yes, these are my house curtains. Um, it's great making your own time. It's great finally to be able to do what you want to do, uh, which is what I love to do is go around looking for old cars and maybe restoring them, um, putting them back to all their former glory and then finding their new homes. I love doing that, okay? But in order to love doing uh, that, I have had to build a nest egg that would survive me or would, would, would last for the end of my life, okay? Because YouTube doesn't pay that well, I'll be honest with you. Uh, unless you have a million over subscribers, yes, there are people who are making millions out there on YouTube. I am not one of them, okay? Um, there's this kid who, who gets free toys to review and he makes millions, okay? He's got a million subscribers or more. Millions of subscribers. He makes millions. He gets free toys to subscribe. Is that a dream job or what, okay? And he's one of the lucky ones because um, he's getting paid to do his dream job. This is my dream job. And I'm getting paid, but not as much as that kid. Uh, and I love doing what I do. And I've met so many awesome people. My Horizon team, Bobby Bang, uh, HP, Khan, Tana, Sri, um, Kadok, and, and Nas, and, 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 and Thomas, and, and Tan, uh, TJ. All you guys, all of them, I mean, they're like my family, okay? And I love working with them. Uh, but oh, don't quit your job now to suddenly come out and do this, okay? That's the worst possible thing you can do because it's like any new business. I'll give you an example. In a magazine business last time, if you wanted to start a magazine, be prepared for losses for the first year. You're not going to make anything. In fact, you're probably going to lose money. And don't quit your job now just for the sake of pursuing your passion. It's wonderful that you have passion. Hold on to it, but don't quit your day job just yet. Because I'll tell you frankly, this job doesn't pay as great as many think. All right? Um, I've been lucky because I've been working in a line that I love for the last 30 years. And I managed to save up. And then finally, I just decided I don't want to do a 9 to 5 anymore. I cannot sit behind a desk for eight hours a day anymore. I've paid my dues. I'm 52, 
53 this year. Um, I'm going to take early retirement. I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. I want to pursue my passion uh, more fully. And uh, that, that, that's, that's how I did it. But if I had done what I'm doing now, 30 years ago, fuck that shit, I don't need it. I quit. <laughs> I would be broke and dead in a gutter 20 years ago. Okay? So it's good to hold on to your passion if you like it. I mean, if you love the automotive scene, learn more about it. Try and get an internship in, um, in a, I don't know, a website like Voltan.org, uh, in a media powerhouse like Horizon. Um, try and get into what uh, you love to do. You know, some, somehow, try and get to what you love to do um, in a small way first, in a small way first. And if you already have a stable 9 to 5 paying job that you're okay with doing, keep doing it. And at the side, learn about this industry. Uh, slowly, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll give you a very good example. Anybody who says, Chris, I want to do what you do, can you hire me? The first thing I'll ask them is write me an article, a feature about your own car. I want 1,500 words and I want it by three days from now. Can you do that? Because that's exactly what you're going to have to do. You have to work under pressure, doing something that you love, but working under pressure are two different things, yeah. Very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. I tell you, I tell you straight up. It's not as easy as, as how some of us make it out to be. Yes, we make it look easy because we've been doing it a long time. But uh, it's not easy. It's not an easy job. You don't see what goes on behind the in the, in the background. Okay, you just see what we want you to see. You see our videos. Uh, you see the events we attend. Uh, you see the cars we drive. And everybody thinks that they want to get into this this industry. And the very next day, they're going to be handed the keys to a Ferrari and told, do whatever you want. The car is yours. You can return it whenever you want. Never going to happen. When I started out in this business, I worked six months without seeing my first test car. I wrote from press kits. I wrote from telephone interviews. I wrote from, e wait, wait, that wasn't even email, mailed press kits. Yeah, you, you, and then retype. Six months before I got my first test car, which was a freaking Jeep Cherokee 2.5. It wasn't even a you know, Lamborghini or a Ferrari or a Porsche. Freaking hell, it wasn't even a Toyota. It was a, a Jeep, which no longer exists. But I stuck it out, and um, I'm now finally doing what I love to do and doing it when I want to do it. And I, I just absolutely love it. You know, it, no stress, no fuss. It just, uh, it's just wonderful. Uh, oh, I pulled this out of my tire the other day. And decided to keep it as a souvenir. Sorry. So, okay, moving on. Yeah, sorry. Um, hey, Javin from Singapore. Sorry, this is the replies are coming a bit late. Uh, hi, Aslan. Yeah, I think I said that already. <laughs> Ramesh, hey, bro, what's up? Alex, Alex, when are you coming home? Alex, I still got your stuff here, man. I need to pass it to you. Okay. Alex says, many of. Um, Oh, mine, yeah. Many of your 112 die-cast model cars are safely displayed at Feast and Furious Cafe. Yes, Kuching Folk. Um, Alex, my car is there. Keep a lookout for it. Kuching Folks, um, check out Feast and Furious Cafe, Alex Wong's Cafe. It's freaking awesome. And I'm not just saying that because some of the cars he bought from me are oh, on this wall. Okay, But it's a freaking awesome cafe. I wish, Alex, we should start one here so that we can come every day. Okay, Go to Feast and Furious. Okay, uh, When you do finally visit, uh, we may have moved to a new location. Exclusive news only for Chris Wee's blog. <gasps> oh, exclusive, exclusive. Yes, folks. So they might move. Um, Feast and Furious might move to a new location. Wow. Okay. All the best with that, Alex. I hope it goes well. Really. Yeah. Congratulations, man. Still in Kuching, I hope. Okay. Anyway, uh, Jin, my Gen Two has had been has done two time top overhaul twice already. Wow. And now has some kind of full throttle body problem. The RPM stays around one thousand. Five to 2002 without revving it. Oh, <clears throat> idle valve sensor? No, probably not. Take it over to Kenzo, man. Let them have a look at it, really. Okay, cool. Hey, Chris, any plans on getting a Satria Neo? Nah, sorry, man. Not a fan of the Neo. I, I said it earlier, I don't know if you were already here, but I can never get comfortable in the Neo. Uh, the driving position is a bit weird for me. It's like uh, I got to drive like, th like, like this, and then if I use the sun visor, it comes down to here. Yeah, blocks everything. So, okay. Hey, Anthony's here. What's up? Oh, my little brother Anthony. Yes, you still got the the Mercedes uh thing on the wall. Yeah, the the rim cap. Yeah. 
Um, Shamin, Muhammad Shamin, hi, Mr. Chris. Can you find me a 1983 Honda Accord? Want to surprise my dad with the car? Oh, that's so sweet, dude. Um, your best bet would actually be to go to Facebook Marketplace, key in the search, and I think I've seen a few of them. 83 Accord is very old. It's the first gen, isn't it? Is it the first or second gen? I saw a red first gen, less than 10K, Facebook Marketplace. Uh, the profile shot is the back end of the car. Go check it out now. Facebook Marketplace, check it out. Orion body is very tough. Yes, it is, ADYMY. Uh, it is very, very tough. And it doesn't suffer from those uh, rust spots on the doors that you see on some of the uh, later Saga Magmas and Megaballs uh, because the the was glue or was it the glue or the uh, silicone or something on the inside ate into the uh, metal and came out on the other side. So it was really bad. And Orion didn't have that. So I've got... Honestly, I'm not bragging. I got the best of both worlds. I've got an Orion body and a 1.5 mega valve engine in one car. And uh, so it's still an 85 car, but with a heart transplant, a newer heart. Very happy about that. Jajai Wan, hello, 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 buddy. Okay, Aslan Din, for me, the best saga is the mega valve version. Yes, a quite powerful 12 hour. Yes, indeed. And with better gear shift quality than original Orion with uh, so called push rod gear shift linkage. Yeah, that linkage can come loose, though. And it's a bit loose on my car. I think I've got to get it. Uh, got to get it checked up. It's like uh, making the uh, making tose when I'm looking for gears. Have you heard that expression? <laughs> a lot of people uh, used it in back in my time. When you make tose, you have to you have to swirl the tose onto the pan, right? Like roti jala, like that. Yeah. So <laughs> when the linkage is loose, you are like making roti jala and tose, looking for the gears. Okay, con tuning in from your S Max. Now you're just showing off. Now you're just showing off. Pulled over at a petrol station to comment. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, Kai, Kal, Khalil Cool X. What's up, Chris? What's up? Yes, uh, Conway Lian has got a second E39. Um, that's just not fair. I mean, having one is already damn good. You could have bought a second one, but yeah, congratulations on that. Let's see. Love the A86 Mampu Daikas only. Yes. Kalil Kul, I agree with you. Mampu die cast only. I think the next live I'll do it from my den, then you guys can, can see my, my die cast. Hang on a second. Crazy Logic. Hey, what's up, bro? Hi, Chris. So lately came across a 80s police car, which was a Volvo 340. Yes. Yes. Uh, do I own any version on that range? No, I don't own a 340. Uh, did you know there was also, yes, the police car was used as a 340, but did you know there was also an ultra rare 440 hatchback Volvo with pop up? And down headlights. Yeah, go check it out. Google it. 440 Volvo pop up headlights. Unbelievable. I think it's the only Volvo with pop up headlights. Could be wrong. Anyway, uh, Sam, hey, I drive an E30. Whoa, good for you. 323, no less. And I've been driving issues with cold starts. RPM tends to fluctuate between 600 and 1000. Okay, just wondering whether you have that issue with my, with my E30. I never had that issue with my E30. Then again, my E30 didn't have a regular starter system, it had a push start button. Uh, a key and push start button, uh, which was kind of weird. Um, turn the key and press the button to start, but to turn it off, if you you have to turn the key. If you press the button again, it, it spools up the uh, the uh, starter motor, and that's a horrible sound. If you've ever started a, restarted a car while the car is already started, and you know turn the ignition and restart the car, and the starter motor turns, it's the why do they make it like that? It's enough to give you a heart attack. Uh, it's a horrible, horrible sound when you turn the starter motor and the, when the car is already started. Okay, Yestin Ng, Con Conway Leon, poison, yes. He's, he's been poisoning a lot of people this late, lately, this con, really. Okay, James, Chris, I realize you have not restored any Korean cars like Hyundai, Kia, Chevrolet, well, Daewoo, yes, you said. Uh, Sanyong, how about Sanyong? I've not, I've not done any Sanyong. Uh, I was actually looking at a Sanyong Muso the other day. You remember those, the, the Muso 4x4? Uh, then I remembered they use Mercedes-Benz engines, so no. Um, I had actually uh, a Hyundai Coupe, aka the Cockroach. I don't know if you remember that one or not. Um, after the S Coupe, uh, there was a Hyundai Coupe, and uh, it, it it had curves. You know, it looked like a it's like a Korean version of a Dodge Viper kind of thing. Uh, not pop and not pop it, blah, not pop up headlights, just regular headlights. But they called it the Cockroach because from the front, apparently, it looked like a Cockroach. But I never could see the resemblance. I don't know why they called it a Cockroach. But I had one of those. Um, and I enjoyed driving it, actually. I really did. But this was long before I was doing videos. Uh, I really enjoyed that car quite a lot. Um, I haven't found a, any Korean car apart from the Stinger GT, 
that really appeals to me. And of course, I can't afford a Stinger GT. So the hunt will continue until one comes along that um, that maybe, you know, I will consider getting. Maybe a 4x4, like the, uh, what was that? What was that? Um, no, that was a Lada. <laughs> the Lada Niva. Why did I think it was Korean? That's Russian. Okay. Okay. Uh, Aslandin, I almost bought a sunny California. Oh, the uh, AD Resort. Okay, right? Yeah, that one was the California. But the condition is bad, especially the interior. Still hunting for a wagon. Yeah, okay. If you're hunting for it, then it was the AD Resort. I love the AD Resort. I wish I could get one. But uh, haven't found one or good enough to purchase. And most people who have them don't want to sell them. Um, because I guess they're that good. Uh, 80s music, somebody watching me <laughs> rock well. Yes. Did you know Michael Jackson's in that in that song? Yeah. He's the part. He, he's the guy that's singing that part that somebody's watching me. Yeah, that's that's Michael Jackson. Uh, Matt 92, would I get a classic Beatle? No, Matt. Sorry. Not really into that. Hi, Mitish. Is it Mitish? Okay. Let's see. More, 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 more questions here. How about a Mercedes-Benz C-Class W203? I was looking at them. Can you believe it? I found one for... 7,000 ringgit, 7,000 ringgit, but it was already sold. It was in Johor, black color with black crimps. Very cool. Uh, the peanut IC200, yes, yes, that was the one uh, that was for sale. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. The one that was for sale for 7K wasn't the peanut. It was before the peanut. It was the triangle, the triangle rear, rear lights. Yeah, that one was only 7K. But for that matter, the uh, peanut headlight or uh, sideways snowman, as I called it in America, <laughs> Uh, it's uh, the fallen over snowman. Look at the headlights. It looks like a snowman's fallen over. Come on. Um, those are still in the, those are, You can get them in the teens, actually. Good cars. Um, okay. Aja Anna Urun HXH. You guys, some of your names are hard, man. Appreciate if you could share where is the foreman for the classic Fiat. I have a Fiat 124 Special T. Ooh, congratulations. I used to have one of those as well. Nice car. Um, careful about rust, yeah. Karat too, gila and then uh, and from 1973, yeah, that was about mine as well. So far, I've sent to Epo. From here, you sent to Epo to be fixed. No, just look for Ramli Motor Works. You go to uh, Google, look for Ramli Motor Works, or uh, maybe even Facebook, and uh, he's the guy that uh, has been looking after my uh, Afeta. So yeah, he's really good with with all Fiats. So you know, you can check him out for sure. Abang Ramli, send send my regards. Very cool, uncle. Listen to what he has to tell you, yeah? He is very knowledgeable. And uh, don't try and bullshit him. He's eaten a lot more salt than you have sugar, my friend. Okay, Con, what you saying? Tweezy turns more heads than any Ferrari or Lamborghini. Yeah, what's up? It's true, it's true. When I was driving the Tweezy, it made so many people around me so happy that it made me happy to be making other people happy. People would wave and laugh and, and you know, um, kids would, would burst out with laughter and point and, hey, the circus is in town. It's a bald clown. But, you know, hey, it's okay. They were so happy. They were so bad. That car made people so happy. Uh, it was really good. I love the Tweezy. And you know what? After I'm done with it, I just park it in my porch, 12-volt socket, plug it in. Next day, ready to go again. Or not even next day. A few hours later, ready to go again. Lovely, lovely run-around car. I, I took it all over this place. Very nice. Go check out the videos on the Tweezy. You would never see me so happy driving a driving a test car when you when I was driving the Tweezy. Okay. Will I be getting a uh, 210 soon? Not so soon, Mitesh. Uh, not so soon. I think um, I'm very happy with the uh, 124 right now. Yeah, 124 right now. See, I'm losing track of the 12s. Huh? 126, just so 124, 123. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, I think I'll hold on to that for a while. Okay. Uh... How's your 124 doing, Jason? Jackson, yes, it's doing very well. Thank you. It's at Ake's place now. I think I put a... No, I think, okay, I did. I put a, a community update. You can go and see. He sent me some photos of it. Right, I missed a few. Sorry. It's very hard to... I think I'm going to use this instead. Yeah, that's got more, more control. All right. Peugeot 405, who just said something about... See, I just, I just, it just flashed in front of me now. Hang on a second. Let me go up. Let me go up. Yeah. Hang on. This stupid thing. I went and clicked the wrong place and then it just skipped the whole page. So talk among yourselves for a while while I find where I left off. Okay. Well, missed quite a lot. There we go. Good evening, Eric. See? Hey, Bang is here. Hey, Bang. We were just talking about you. Good things, good things, good things. We were talking about Miata's, Bang. Yeah. Hello, hello. 
Sorry, everybody's asking about cars. Let me ask about something else. What's your favorite food? Oh, Burger King. My favorite food is burgers. I love burgers. I'm a burger kind of guy. See, I'm just picking up now. Ah, here we go. Peanut eye. That's that's where I left off. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Tweezy Tomo's heads. Yes. Okay, 127. Mm. Okay, I left off at Mitish asking about a 210. Darren, everybody has cars. Yes, now you know I like burgers. Lim, Kenneth. Hi, Kenneth. What's up? Chris, what do you think of the Airstream Caravan type of automobile travel? Oh, you mean like a pulling a trailer sort of thing? It doesn't work here, really. Um, pulling a trailer here? Motorhomes, I don't think really work here because we've got so many cheap hotels, shop lot hotels, uh, places to stay, B&Bs, uh, Airbnbs. Uh, so, nah. Motorhomes, I don't think, I don't think so. I would love to have a motorhome outside my home. Then I could, you know, just run away and be by myself. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, Windows 95, you're very late. If it's any consolation, I'm actually using Windows 95. <laughs> yes, my laptop is very, very, very old. It might be time for me to get a new laptop. Merwin, W124 is king, yeah. How does it feel driving a Satria 1.3 with the HKS Air intake? Uh, I currently own a Putra and going to get another 1995 Satria 1.6 for 3K. Woo! Manual? Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, 1.6 Satria would be nice if it's manual. All right. Um, the Satria 1.3. Somebody actually mentioned the other day that uh, it's actually the engine is quite loud, and I agree. And so with the HKS filter, the open port filter, it was ridiculously loud. Really, really loud. It was so bad that I've actually put in the original, put back the original airbox, and I bought a K and N drop-in filter. You know, the, the square one. It just looks exactly like a like the normal uh, paper filter, but it's a K and N mesh filter. Put that in, and it's not as loud anymore, but it's slightly louder than what it used to be. But I find that uh, initial acceleration is is much better, and roll-on acceleration in third gear, roll-on acceleration in third gear between eighty and one hundred and ten is better. Much better, yeah. But you know what? It's only about 79 bhp. Stock, brand new. I have no idea how many horses have left that bonnet. I'm thinking quite a lot. So, yeah, it's, it's you know, it's fun driving a, a slow car fast more than uh, driving a fast car slow. Yeah. Uh, okay. You are laughing because of the Waja gearbox because it's hanging to one side. Why the Waja gearbox being like that? You tell me, man. It was like that since day one. It was like that since day one. Yeah. Hi, Cole. Welcome. Welcome. It's okay. Um, I started this only about an hour. Whoa. An hour and 30 minutes ago. Hi, Eric. Good evening. Uh, Matt is still looking for a Saga restoration. Good, good, good. Yeah. Good. Do it. Good. Do it. There was one in uh, Kenzo the other day. And uh, Rao. Rao, I don't know if you're watching, but Rao is, is um, rebuilding, okay? He's not restoring. He is rebuilding a saga. Um, I did a video on it. You could see it. Uh, it's, 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 in, uh, it's in my, I think it's in my playlist for my saga videos. And um, he bought that car because he was inspired by mine. And now he is rebuilding it, which is not a restoration. He is a, it's a freaking ground up rebuild. He stripped it. He's going to respray even the, down to the chassis. And he is rebuilding it, which is uh, amazing. So all the best to you, man. I'm really looking forward to see what the car looks like afterward. It is, I can tell you now it's going to look better than mine. That's for sure. For sure. For sure. Um, on RFI, Chris, I'm always a fan of W124. My late father owned a 260E. Yeah, nice. 124s, they made millions of them, like 4.4 million 124s. So I think they're still going to be around for a long time to come. Parts are abundant. Uh, so I think 124s are going to be around for a very long time. If, you, if you're looking to buy a 124 and are worried about getting parts, don't. I have not had any issues getting parts. I even bought a brand new this. I mean, look at that. This is like, like gold. Can you see that? Sorry. I'm not very good with this webcam thing. Because um, I don't have an OnlyFans. No, you didn't hear that. But yeah, this is a new bonnet emblem. And it's got the, uh, the hologram. Can you see that? It's got the Mercedes hologram. How cool is that? So yes, it's original, new old stock for a 124. Let me see the number. And yeah, it's just this. The bonnet, the bonnet emblem. Okay, I know it's really stupid, 
Um, but I love seeing this while I'm driving, and it's a perfect view because you can see the star um, as you're driving. And mine on the 124 right now is, is tarnished. It's like a matte finish. Uh, nothing against matte, but this thing's got to shine. It's a star. It has to shine. So I bought it brand new for a grand total of 1,150 no, ringgit. 150 ringgit. Brand new. New old stock. Original equipment. 150 bucks. Come on. So what, in Germany, it was like 20 cents? <laughs> okay. Moving along. What do you think of the Satria Neo Auto? A lot of people asking me about the Satria Neo. This is like the fourth time somebody's asking me about the Satria Neo on this, uh, on this chat. Um, I can't drive a Satria Neo. Sorry, I, I can't get comfortable. Like I said just now, I, I, my, the driving position makes me sit too far back. And then, you know, when I, I can't use a sun visor because it does this. <laughs> so I, I can't, I can't. My good friend and bro, uh, Bakri, used to have a Satria Neo, and I could never get comfortable. It was a beautiful car. And he could get really comfortable and drove very fast in it. Uh, but I could never get comfortable in it. So, yeah, I don't think I'll be getting a Neo anytime soon. Um, I see in YouTube somebody drive a Tweezy from Tamantun to Janda Bai. Wow, is he still there? <laughs> Chris, I seriously, I got to say, you are freaking love your I freaking love your videos. Thank you. And like the way you make me dream of getting a classic car rather than new ones. Uh, and I... Wonderful. I like new cars, but all I can have in the heart for classics. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, it's not about the money, you know, it's about just there's a certain satisfaction of buying something old um, and then doing it up and seeing it come back to life like this. I just found this. How cool is that? But my car's not in Iswara. This is for this is a Saga Iswara owner's manual. Yeah, I think it was from my dad's Iswara. Could, could be from my dad. <laughs> oh, stickers. Blaupang stickers. This is the uh, the head unit for the uh, oh security security stickers. Nice. This was the head unit for a Proton Iswara, Blau Punk, Blue Spot. There you go. Cool. Yeah. Everything is in black and white except for that. Why? Because Blau Punk means blue spot. <laughs> oh look, it's still got its own case. Eon Tech. Wait a minute. Galaxy Silver. I don't remember owning a Galaxy Silver Iswara. My Iswara was white. My dad's Saga was maroon. So whose car is this? Eh, no idea. Anyway, the stuff I find in my den once in a while is just, is just crazy. So, sorry, moving along. Okay. Mm -hmm. Watched your video on how to buy a used car and seriously learned quite a lot. Thank you, Windows 95. Imran... Hi, Chris, for classic car parts that are hard to find. Oh, 3D printing. Yeah. My cousin, Dylan, uh, the Z4 that I, that, I, that I reviewed, he has got a 3D printer. And he's 3D printed some pretty interesting stuff. So, of course, it, it's got to be you know, low-impact stuff like uh, trim parts and stuff like that. But yeah, I think 3D printers are taking restorations to the next level already because you can 3D print all kinds of stuff, uh, grab handles, um, a pillar moldings, you know, stuff like that that you cannot buy anymore for like really, really old classics like a Ford Model T, stuff like that. And I think it would be as easy as me going to Motorsport Playground and asking them to make 16 valve sticker for my laser and DOAC 16 valve for the center. I think it's going to be as easy as that in the future. So, yeah, restorations might be getting easier um, as technology improves. How cool is that? I mean, that, that's going to be awesome. Uh, Chia, thanks for answering my question. You're welcome. Um, hope one of the mail stick with video of your Weevil. Sure. Um, I should organize a drive. Once MCO is over, look out in the community section. I'm going to organize a drive for sure. Yeah. Um, Nur Hamadi. Hi, Chris. Indian Kwaila. Oh, thank you. Kong Hifa Choi. There we go. Thank you very much. Okay. Still moving along. Okay. Oh, why do... Mm, interesting question. Uh, from HVZZ, HZZ, HUZZ. <laughs> you guys' names are killing me. Hi, Chris. Why, why with Feta when you, when there are so many other classics? Why not? Why not? Why this instead of that? Why not? Why not? Because I, I'm a big Alfa Romeo fan. Uh, then again, I'm also a big BMW and Mercedes fan. And uh, the Alfetta, actually, this is the first Alfetta I ever bought. And then I sold it. 
Uh, I bought two more after that, and then I rebought my first. So although it's my third, it's actually my first. Yeah, I know it's, it's a bit weird. I love the Alfetta. Uh, I'm not sure if you know, but the Alfetta was used as a police car in Malaysia in the 70s. If you've watched, um, ask your dad or your granddad about Jin Samsudin's uh, movie Gerak Kilat, uh, the Alfetta had a starring role in it. And it's a lovely car to drive. Did you know that in, in the UK, my Alfetta, the four-door sedan, it's called the, the Alfetta four-door sedan, is worth about 12,000 pounds. Pounds, yes. Pounds sterling. So if I ever sell it, I'm going to sell it in the UK. But I don't think I'm ever going to sell it. I love that car. Okay. Mm. Do I, have I had a Perodua in my life? No, I have not. I've had many Protons, but not a Perodua. Good point. So maybe maybe one day, yeah? maybe I'll get one of that. Okay. Let's see. Arturo, greetings from Manila, Philippines. Greetings, Arturo. How are you, my brother? I have uh, become a fan of Horizon Car Review. Good. Yes. Don't forget there's so many of us in Horizon, yeah? I'm just one. I'm a little minnow in a huge pond of Horizoners. Please go check out their channels. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the wishes, Arturo. Okay, what else? Looking forward to see the 124, 200E. Yes, me too. Monday, Monday. I'm picking up the 124 and sending in the Volvo. I'll do a video. Yes. Um, Aslan says, if I want to quit a job, first thing I need to show is no debt. Absolutely. Don't have any debts. Yeah, try and try and uh, free yourself from debt. Don't don't live in debt. That's why somebody asked me the other day. I mean, he's only making like three grand, but the 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 the, uh, the payment for his car is going to be about two grand. You're spending half your salary, more than half your salary, just to pay off a car. Not a way to live. Not a way to live. No. Oh, Jeremy, Tia, T Long Hai, Jeremy, Dan, Dan Ching Ho, hello, and Wee Shen, hello, guys. Hi, thank you for joining, John Gomez. Will you do up a classic SUV or four-wheel drive? I almost bought the Toronto, John. I almost bought the Toronto. And you'll see the Toronto again because on Monday, William is sending it to RK. Uh, sorry, Tuesday, he's sending it to RK. Monday, I'm sending the, the Volvo wagon and picking up the 124. So I think I will document the uh, paint job of the Toronto. And yes, it's still up for grabs. So if anyone's interested, that, that Toronto is still up for grabs. Please buy it before I do. It's so nice. It's so nice to drive. Okay, let's see. Dan, do I have any thoughts on a Peugeot 405? I love the 405. Did you know that the rear suspension is like this? Yeah, don't play the fool. The 405 has got some very interesting stuff in it. Um, I like the SRI manual and uh, even the 406. Oh, should I tell you about this? Because I'm kind of interested in it myself. Uh, go to Muda, key in um, Peugeot. Click the filter, show cheapest first. 405, sorry, 406, Peugeot 406, manual, 3,900 ringgit. The only thing is it's far away, but uh, 3,900 ringgit for a Peugeot 406, manual, not 405, huh? 406, the successor, manual. Jason, how is your 124 doing? Doing very well. I'm going to pick it up at our case uh, on uh, Monday. Stay tuned, video coming. Uh, any thoughts on an Alfa Romeo 156 for uh, V6 2.5? Bye. Silver next, buy, just buy. Um, because if I'm not mistaken, the 2.5 V6 uh, is using a Qmatic gearbox, which is just a lot better than the seller speed. I really don't like the seller speed. Um, it's one of the worst gearboxes I've ever driven uh, for an Alfa Romeo or for any car for that matter. I don't like the seller speed. I love, and that's a shame because I love the 156. I think it's beautiful. Uh, I just really don't like the seller speed gearbox. Really don't like it at all. Um, okay. Almost getting to the end here. Let's see. Anthony. Yo, Anthony, shouldn't you be asleep, young man? Okay. Uh, hey, Chris, would you restore a Sanyong Rexton, the early model? Mm, nah. I'd rather I, I, I'd rather get the Chiron. Do you remember the Chiron? No, sorry, not the Chiron. The Action Sport. The Sanyong Action Sport. It was a pickup truck. And if you don't remember what it looks like, uh, just think of a shark. And it looks like a shark. Yeah, I'll go Google it. The Action Sport was pretty cool. One of the earliest trucks with the coil spring suspension in the rear, if memory serves, and it usually doesn't. So, but yeah, the Action Sport was pretty cool. Uh, Yestin, would you have ever thought of owning a 38? Yes, a BMW E38. Yeah, I would love to own an E38. I had an E24, um, sorry, E23, 7 Series. I also had an E24, 6 Series, two of them. Uh, but yeah, the E23 7 Series was a very nice car. The Shark Nose, yep. 
and uh, the E38s are, are very nice too, and they're going cheap. The, the only thing is they are quite uh, difficult, not difficult, um, pricey to maintain. That, that's the only thing. And of course, uh, road tax, not cheap, unless you can get classic status. Right. Okay. Thoughts on comparing it to an E39 530 uh, between an E38 728. I go for the E39. Yeah, but then again, I'm not you. I'm not buying it. You are. So which one do you like? Buy the one that you like. Really, YOLO. YOLO, baby. Life's too short to drive boring cars. Right. Let's see. Dylan, hey. What's up? Hi, Dylan. Albert Chu. Hi, Chris. Good to see you here in person. Thank you, bro. Just moisturize, wax the 126 and all in good hands. Yeah, excellent. Wonderful. Okay, okay, fine. Since he commented, the in the community section today, uh, I posted that the 126 has uh, arrived safely at his new home in Kuching. And there was a shot of a guy in a red shirt at the very end. That's the new owner. And he just commented here, yeah, Albert. Congratulations, Albert. You've got my baby. Kuching folks, keep a lookout for my baby. And Albert will be at the wheel. If there was a Purodua Weevil, I wonder what it would be. It would be manual. <laughs> That's what it would be. Okay. Let's see. Are you still alive? I should very well hope so, Cedric. Do you think you're talking to a zombie? Oh, are you still alive? Yes, yes, yes. This is life. <laughs> Maybe it's getting a bit late. Huh? Sorry, I misread it as, are you still alive? I'm like, the what? Okay, yes. Uh, I'm still live. This is live. Yes, you're coming to you live. How can I prove it? Here's my watch. And it's uh, 12.30. No, it's not. Oh, it's reflected. That's why it's, just, <laughs> it's actually 11.30. Yeah. On Tuesday. No, it's not Tuesday. What the hell day is it today? Today's Saturday night. Yeah. So, okay. Moving along. What, a, what about a 1.8 Putra? I would love to get a Putra. I would really love to get a Putra. Yeah. Sadly, yeah, Satria GTI Putra, two of the, to me, um, best protons, two of the best, two of the best protons, no successor, no real successor. The chats are a bit delayed. Yeah, could be, could be. Sorry about that. Um, hello, Jonathan David Vincent. How are you? Have you sold your Scirocco yet? Is it still for sale? I, you, you didn't, you weren't here when I said just now that the Scirocco is my favorite VW, modern VW. Hmm. Yes, yes it is. And I still remember our drive. And I still remember the sound of your car. And I still remember hating you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Of course not. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, Felix, hi Chris. What are your thoughts on the W126 300 SEL? Mm, if you can get an SEL, that's, that's great. Yeah. In case some of you watching don't know, there's a 300 SE or 280 SE, like the one I had. 300 SE, then there's an SE. L. The L is for longer. I mean, that's the best way to put it. Uh, the one way to tell is the back door and window. You can see it's significantly wider than the uh, 300 SE. So yeah, yes, EL is, is wonderful. Um, W140, I like them very much, but I would only go as far as the 280S um, because, the, sorry, S280. Mercedes swapped over the S's after a while. I don't know why they did that. But yeah, I would go for the S280. If only because there's no way in hell I'm going to pay 3.2 liter road tax for a car that old. It's mad. Unless, again, you can get classic status. But like I said earlier, it's not easy. Darren, you're still here watching. Thank you. We're going on an hour 44 minutes already. And you guys are still here on a Saturday night. Wow, thank you so much. Happy New Year, Cedric. Thank you. Um, Jonathan, can you say a few things about the Proton Satria R3, please? Uh, wow, very rare. Um, if you can find a Genuine, oh, wait a minute. Are you talking about Sat Satria R3? Okay, good. You're not talking about the Iris R3 and the um, the uh, Persona, not Persona, what was the Saga R3 that they just launched right now. Um, the actual R3, I think it was a very good effort. But uh, sadly, to me, it was already based, it was based on a car that was already inherently not so great in terms of the build quality. So they tried to redo as best they could and they did a very good job um, making it better, but uh, inherently it comes from a time when, uh, like the Gen 2s and the, and the LMSTs, when uh, cer certain protons, um, no, not certain, most basically all protons out there that came out during that time 
were really wanting in the uh, quality department. And I'm putting it as best as I can because I know some of you guys out there, you own these cars and I don't want to insult you. Remember, this is just my personal opinion. I feel that Proton could have done a lot better in terms of the cars that they came up with during that time. Um, but for various reasons, they didn't. And uh, we suffered. We as a consumer suffered. And that is when it was during that time that Proton lost a lot of its supporters. Um, it lost a lot of their uh, market share. They lost a lot of people who had faith in the brand up to that point. And so now, there's a, there's a famous saying, changing someone's mind is easy. Changing a mindset is very difficult. And so now, together with Geely, they're trying to change that mindset. Uh, but I, I know for a fact there are people out there that are just have sworn off protons for the rest of their lives. They are never going to be forgiven. And uh, that's sad because I got to say the X50 is a very nice car to drive. You know, I really like driving it. And... I, like I said earlier, I've got four protons out there. Uh, one I have to deliver to its new owner, of course, but I'm still left with three. So I like I like protons. I'm not a proton hater. I'm not a proton basher. In fact, I'm not a basher, period. I don't bash for the sake of bashing because people think that the, the car is bad. They want everybody to think the car is bad. Uh, so everybody should bash the car. I'm very pragmatic because in 30 years of doing this job, I've learned one thing. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. And... Um, there are always ways to say things better, uh, except when I did the LMSD video and completely lost it. I'm so sorry about that. I can't retract what I said. But that car really, really pissed me off a lot. It, because I know the backstory of that car and it really pissed me off. And so I'm so sorry about that. I might delete the video later. But um, yeah, it, uh, funnily enough, it's one of the best performing videos. <laughs> but I'm not simply going to bash cars for the sake of bashing. Huh? It, uh, I'll, I'll never do that. I'll call it as I see it, um, but I'm not going to bash just for the sake of bashing it because that's the popular thing to do. Um, then again, I'm not even going to, on the flip side, I'm not going to say nice things about something which everybody's saying nice things about it, but if I think it's crap, it's crap. Plain and simple. Oh, uh, Denzel24, hey, Chris, Zachary's brother here. Hey, what's up, bro? What's up? How's it going? How's Zach? Send, send my regards, yeah? Okay. Happy CNY. Hey. See, I did it again. I went up. I went upstairs instead of downstairs. Okay, can't agree on seeing the three-pointed star perch, right? Right? Yeah. When I can't, I'll tell you a funny story. In fact, I'll tell all of you a funny story. Uh, Evo Enduro 2017. I drove my W126 to Phuket and back. There were certain stretches where I was getting sleepy, um, losing concentration, and I've always said, "Don't drive when you're drowsy." So what I did was I entertained myself by using that three-pointed star at the end of my bonnet as like a targeting device. And I started driving and targeting cars in front of me. <laughs> and then when it came into the crosshairs of the three-pointed star, I would go, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Yeah, the things we do to keep, uh, to keep awake, right? Speaking of hood emblems, look at that. Sitting right in front of me, this is the spirit of ecstasy in this very cool Rolls Royce calendar that they sent over. Rolls Royce does things like really nice. I mean, even the quality of the of the card feels nice. So cool. Anyway, so moving along. Uh, thanks for the advice. When is your next car diesel? Sooner than you might think, actually. Sooner than you might think, Mohammed Samir. Thank you. Thank you, Flo. Okay. What can you say about American cars and your favorite American car? I love American cars, but with a caveat, I love Amer old American muscle cars. Mustangs. Uh, the old Camaros. If you've never seen a movie called Vanishing Point, you've got to see a movie called Vanishing Point from the 70s uh, where they used a white Dodge Challenger. Um, I love muscle cars. I used to have, when I studied in America, I had a Chevelle. And uh, I love the sound they make. And uh, they're absolutely shit to drive. But they are so cool. Um, you know, it, it's crazy. There's no handling. The car is made to go in a straight line and only a straight line. And even then, you've got to be careful because if you jam the brakes and lock the, and lock the tires, you will go into a spin. It's so badly set up. I'm talking about those all-American muscle cars, right? And uh, there's so much float. You can drive into a 7-Eleven, go buy your stuff and come out. And the car would be facing the other way already because it would have bounced while you had stopped and turned around for you. So, yeah, it's, it's mad. I mean, there's, there's a famous saying, you can actually... Once you stop driving your old American muscle car, you get out. And by the time you finished your cigarette, maybe the car would have stopped rocking already so that you can get back in. Yeah, 
but I love American muscle cars. It's so sad that we can't, don't have them here because of our crazy road tax system, which is archaic, and Bobby is right, and I've been saying it for years. Our road tax system needs a revamp. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Come on. My 126 is 36 years old and paying 1,680 ringgit before I got classic status for it. I mean, it's 36 years old. And they were basing it on the fact that big car, big engine, you have big money, you must pay big road tax. There are Merc C classes out there with a 1.5 liter engine paying Vios road tax. Come on. That's how stupid is that? So yeah, needs a revamp. Okay, sorry, moving along. Okay, da, 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 da. British. Oh, James asking whether I want to restore a British Ford classic like an Escort, Capri, or Cortina. I would love to. I come from a Ford family. My mom had an Escort. My dad had a Cortina. So yes, I would love to. I love the laser that I have out there. I'm so happy to get a Ford again that I went and bought this. Um, I know it's silly, but uh, I saw it and I just had to have it because you know it's been a long time since I've had a Ford. And uh, check that out. How cool is that? <laughs> yes, I love this. Oh, cool is that? oh shit, it's too tight. Nah, I'll make it fit. <laughs> I'll make it fit, damn it. Right, so yeah, I would love to get a Capri, but Capri's are ridiculously expensive, so better not. Uh, da, 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 da. Moving along. Sorry. Um, Looking forward to the drive together. Yeah, me too, Cedric. I hope you can drive soon. Um, I heard that the MCO, well, travel restrictions, interstate travel restrictions are not going to be lifted anytime before March. So I'm sorry, Daniel, if you're still watching, but I think it's only going to be the end of March. Any thoughts of the trio of R3 Special Edition Protons launched lately? Uh, mm, it was more, I think they should have been very clear about it. Uh, I, first of all, I don't think they should have called them R3. R3 is a motorsports division. Race, rally, research. It's, uh, it should have been called the R3 trim, uh, more trim and other trim because it was just a trim. It was just a trim package and paint. Yeah, so it's not really an R3 um, and no manual variant. Come on. If they had come up with an R3 Iris manual, you know, even in stock form with, with that uh, black paint job and those yellow stripes and everything, but with a manual gearbox, I think a lot of people could have forgiven them, but nah, uh, sad. How many cars have I owned in total, Ramesh? I have no idea. Honestly, I've lost count. I've lost count of the cars I have currently. have what more cars that I've always had. Uh, totally lost count already. Really. Concept, I, if I line up all the cars I've ever owned, it would reach Ipoh. I can walk on them and reach Ipoh. <laughs> um, Azudin, hi, Chris. Love your video. Thank you, bro. Thank you for being here. Still 124 of you online with me. Wow. Okay. Moving along. Let's see. Oh, who else is there? Uh, no, Cedric, not going to consider a VW Beetle anytime soon. Okay, you know what? It's going to be easy. I'm going to start from the bottom now because every time a new comment comes in, it, it moves and then I don't know which was the last comment I read. So uh, let me go from the top, uh, from the bottom. Mm, no, that's, that's not going to work either because some of you have answered questions already. Hi, Chris. Hi, Alistair. Okay. Very nice. Uh, eight. Okay. Let's see. Saturday is a very free day. Yeah, I guess so. But a Saturday night, remember? Wow. I remember I used to go out every Saturday night. Okay. Opel Calibra, Ian. I used to have one. Yeah. Oh, a very rare two-door car. I had a I had a Calibra a long time ago. Yeah, true. Okay. Oh, sorry. I've gone. Yep. Here we go. Hi, Chris. Love your video. Thank you. And... Uh... Wong, any, uh, any, Chris, any review on the Ben CLK240? Ooh, no, not yet. Mm, not yet. Uh, try and use this. Maybe I have more control. Hang on a sec. Sorry, bad typo. <laughs> Putra is your dream car? Yes. E36 or E46? Ooh, that's a good question, isn't it? Mm, neither are really my favorites. I like them both, but of the two, I would probably go for 36 and purely because I feel the E46 is when BMW got into a lot of electronics and computerization and sensors and stuff like that. I could be wrong, but uh, based on what I've seen in my banker life, um, I see more E46s going in than E36s. And I think it's because it's during the infancy of BMW's foray into computerization and electronics and sensors. 
And uh, as you know, I, I like a car that's as basic as possible with the less things to go wrong. Wind up windows, man. I think all cars should just come up with wind up windows, but of course that's never going to happen again. But it's just one less thing to go wrong. So for me personally, I would go with an E36, but if you like an E46, go for it. Don't go for what I go for. You're the one that's going to buy it, pay for it, and live with it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I think one of the Wira 1.8 that you reviewed got robbed a few weeks ago. Windows 95 sharing this. Honestly, sucks, man. They can not leave this car alone. Yeah, and I'll tell you exactly why. Wira parts are on the top of... Sorry, Wira's are on the top of the theft list for car thieves. Uh toppling even the Hilux because uh, Proton has stopped producing Vira parts. So Vira parts are really getting hard to find. And if you own a Vira now, you need to park it indoors because people are towing away Viras for just the, just the parts. Yeah, I've already told RK this. He donated that spoiler to me from his Vira, but the rest of the car, I shouldn't say that. Any car thieves here? Okay, if any car thieves here, don't, don't listen right now. Okay, because RK is parking his Vira outside there. People, somebody's just going to tow the whole car away just for parts. So what RK is doing is actually stealing his own parts already so that there's left, nothing left to steal except the frame, which they will, can only sell to Busi Buro. So there we go. All right. Uh, Tiango Wira. Yes, the Tiango Wira. Be careful if you if somebody stole it. I heard about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, MHJ, EJ, the LMSD should be a, an economy car, not sporty appealing with its crappiness. Yeah, but it sounds sporty, doesn't it? Stock standard, it sounds so garang, but... Uh, the rest of it uh, is just a bad execution. Bad execution. Okay. Okay, Clarence asking, Hi, Chris. What are your thoughts on cars that have downgraded road tags? Yes, I've heard about this. Example, certain like Bentleys and Jags, less than 25 years old, have low effective road tags but still maintain their massive V8s. And there is something going on called downgrading of the uh, VOC where you downgrade the size of the engine from like 2.8 to 2.0 or something like that. And... Um, Honestly, I don't know how kosher it is. I don't think it is very kosher. I don't know if it's legal. I don't think it's legal. I've never done it. I've never researched it because I, I you know, I maybe I don't want to be tempted to do it if it's going to cost me like under table money that I could afford, you know, downgrade an engine. But um, I don't know if it's kosher. I don't know if it's legal. Uh, I don't think it is. And so that's why I've never really looked into it. Yeah. To me, it's simple. You can't afford the road tax, don't buy the car. <laughs> Very simple. Very simple. Okay. Let's see. Moving along here. Uh, you could say it was one of the best uh, uh, Proton ever made, but there's just 150 of them, yeah. I think that the Satra GTI and the Putra, um, to me, those are the three, three best Protons. Hi, Alistair. Uh, ever made. Let's see. Okay, um, HVZ used to drive a Feta uh, 180, one point. Oh, yeah, that was an Alfetta 1.8, correct. Yes, 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 round lights, the Motronic. Yeah, uh, double round lights, Motronic, great handling machine. Yes, Watts linkage at the back, the Dion rear suspension. Yeah, very nice. The thing about these Guletas and Sads and all that, they're wonderful cars, but they didn't have any anti rust in them, and they rusted, uh, sorry, the rust that they used to build the car. <laughs> the metal that they used to build the car was not rust-proofed, so a lot of these cars have rusted to the ground. And you don't see them anymore because they have literally rusted into the ground. And that's why you just don't see them anymore. Uh, would I be buying a Lexus LS400 and doing it up? No, because I, last I checked, my mango tree is still just producing mangoes, huh? not, not, not money. So no, I'm not going to buy a Lexus LS400. <laughs> LS400, road tax, 4 liter. whoa! The most I've ever paid for road tax for one of my own personal cars was my 635 CSI. 4,000 plus, I think, a year. Or was it 4,006 a year for a 3.5 litre engine? And that was very painful. I remember buying road tax and insurance at the post office and the guy taking the money from me because I paid in cash, the stack was about like this, he, he almost didn't want to take the cash from me and he actually asked me twice, betul ke? Betul nak beli? <laughs> he had never... By his own admission, he had never received that much cash <laughs> over the counter for just road tax. And that's when, a long time ago, I decided, you know what, this is just silly. Until they revamp the and revise the road tax uh, structure in Malaysia, mm, unless I can get classic status, I am probably not going to buy a huge CC car ever again. I think I'll cap it at about 2.5.
yeah, at the most. Yeah. That said, E E46 328i does appeal. Does appeal. Okay. All right, Jonathan, I'd love for you to do a test drive with you. No, man, I'm not going to drive your Roco. Mm -mm. Because then you probably won't get it back. And then I'll be beggared for life. Sorry. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can't wait to go on more drives. Me too, man. Me too, John. Uh, yes. Yes, Windows 95. Not 1,600. 1,680 for a 36-year-old car. That's... That's how ridiculous it was. That's how ridiculous it was. So yeah, our Rotex structure needs to have a huge revamp. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <gasps> Arnold Schwarzenegger. The Terminator is here. He's watching. Mm. Oh, Swagger. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, my reading off. Why did you sell the GTI? Recession hit. I quit my job. I took VSS. I didn't want to pay for any car. I didn't want to have any loans. Without, any, without a stable income, don't be stupid. Uh, don't, don't keep up pretenses. And then eat bread and water. No, no, I'm very pragmatic. I lost my job because I took VSS, sold the car. Sold the car straight. I was paying 1,012 ringgit every month for a Satria GTI. And uh, I love the car. But uh, there is no way I could be able to pay for that till I secured another job. Thankfully, thank God, I secured another job about six months later. But uh, by then, my fancies had, had already moved on. And uh, I had decided that uh, because, okay, I was still paying like two months in uh, after taking the VSS. And then I was seeing that all my VSS money, uh, VSS means voluntary separation scheme. They pay you a lump sum of money, you fuck off, okay? If not, later, if you don't take the VSS and uh, they retrench, you're lucky if you get a month. So I took the VSS, I had six months. But then I noticed that after two months, a third of my VSS money had gone. So I was like, I sold the car immediately because the money would just go. And then what am I going to live on? I can't eat my car. So food, shelter, clothing. Three most important things, the three basic necessities of life. These are the things you got to take care of. Okay? A car is not one of them. So that's why I sold it. Very simple. Nothing to hide. That's exactly why I sold it. Okay. Uh, Chris should be the transport minister. He has more knowledge about the minister. Thank you. Thank you. Sadly, I don't have the looks. I don't have the looks to be a minister. Sorry, sorry. You notice all ministers have hair? Yeah, I've lost out straight away. Uh, Arif Johan, the 10-speed gearbox begs to differ. Uh, oh, sorry, 10-speed gearbox for which, uh, which car? Which car? 10-speed gearbox. Sorry, I, it was based on something I said, right? But forgot. I forgot. I forgot what I said. Sorry. 10-speed gearbox. Uh, um, the new Fords have 10-speed gearbox. Yeah, okay. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um... Hmm. What do you think of the car community in the 90s than today? Wow, good question, Faisal Saleh. Um, the communities themselves were all on, on uh, forums, okay? Unlike social media like Facebook and Instagram and uh, this, uh, YouTube, they were mostly on forums. Um, Auto World Forum was one of the most popular ones. I met a lot of good guys there. Some of them are still my friends. Um, my, my nick was Serpent, 95, Serpent 155 because I was driving my first Alfa Romeo 155 at the time in the 90s. So yeah, Serpent 155, that was me in the Auto World Forum. And uh, I met a lot of good people. I think, the, I think the, the passion for cars is still there, but I think the game has moved on to a, to a different type of game already. Uh, that's a very good question. I, got, I think I'm going to think about that a little bit more and maybe do a video on it. Because, uh, yeah, how has the community, car community changed over the last 20 years? Uh, it's changed a lot. It's changed a lot. Yeah, it really has. I think, I think owners have changed a lot. The cars have definitely changed a lot. I mean, I mean come on, I come from a time when 150 BHP was considered, damn, you're the king of the road already. And uh, 150 BHP now, that's, that's like a family sedan on a bad day. <laughs> so, yeah, I, a long time ago, man. It was, it was crazy. The scene was a lot different. It was very raw. Um, there weren't so many driver aids out there, of course. Um, I think, the, honestly, I think we, bet, we bred better drivers in the 90s because uh, so much concentration was needed to just keep the car going in a straight line without crashing into something. Uh, nothing to save you if you, if you did. So I think it, it made better drivers. I think, 
I still think, I think, and I still think, cars today are doing too much for their drivers. Um, taking away the the actual act of driving, uh, the responsibility of driving, um, autonomous driving. I mean, the car is driving you, uh, and even if you, if your car doesn't have autonomous driving, a lot of modern day cars, the cars are driving you. You're not driving the cars anymore. No, but back then, um, yeah, like when I did the Alfetta video, I wasn't kidding, you know. I took my hands off the steering wheel for just a moment and the car got angry and wanted to spear off into the uh, nearest bush. It's, it's crazy. So much was attention was uh, needed and the cars demanded your respect and attention. If not, they, they would kill you, really. Cars these days are saving you a lot more than you realize. Not you, you per se, the people watching this, but drivers in general. Cars today are saving them a lot more than uh, they realize. And because of that, they're becoming so dependent on these um, um, active safety systems that uh, they're starting to get too lackadaisical in, in the way they drive. Uh, as you know, I'm also a biker and uh, I very rarely ride out now because every single time, at least two or three people try and kill me. And it's all because they're distracted. They're distracted from the drive, the actual essence of driving. They're distracted from it uh, because the, the cars themselves are guilty of making them too distracted or, or, or allowing them to be distracted from the actual act of driving. Uh, the cars are doing so much for them that it allows the driver to do other things other than drive while driving. Um, and it's, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. I saw it the other day when I was on my bike. Um, this driver, a female, had stuck her iPad on her steering wheel with, um, I think it, it might, I, I couldn't see it properly, but I just saw the iPad on the steering wheel. I don't know if she used a blue tag or double-sided tape or maybe a, a frame or something, but she stuck it on an airbag equipped steering wheel and she was tapping on it while driving. If she had hit something hard enough, that iPad would have become her eye and gone through her head and out the back because the force of the airbag coming out, that iPad would have absolutely instantly killed her. But it was more convenient for her, so she didn't have to have, use one hand to hold the iPad and type, which means then she can't hold the steering wheel. So she stuck her iPad on the steering wheel, an airbag-equipped steering wheel. I mean, needless to say, that it's not a very smart thing to do, is it? So yeah, I think cars these days are doing too much for the driver, uh, they're doing. They're, they're making us. They're allowing us to be more distracted than than really what we should be. Um, when I was driving the Alfetta, if I'm driving the Alfetta, to actually shoot while I'm driving, I have to put my GoPro in the in, in my handphone holder. I cannot hold the I cannot hold the GoPro like this and and drive. I can do that with other cars. I can do that with newer cars. I cannot do it with the Alfetta, uh, for that matter, any manual car. So you know what? You want to stop um, having too many distracted drivers on the road, bring back three pedals, really, because you need all your faculties to, to actually drive. Yeah, sorry. I'm rambling. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm rambling. Okay. If money is not an issue, okay, I always love this question. When it starts this way, with money is not an issue, when is money not an issue? <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay, sorry. I... This my mouse has gone a bit crazy. Uh, let me just uh, scroll up here. You can become a lecturer. Thank you, Kerwin. <laughs> no, I have no patience for teaching. Really, I don't. I don't. I mean, I love talking to you guys like this and uh, answering, but I have no real patience for teaching. Um, he's married to cars. No, I have a wife, a very wonderful wife, who just brought me some water. So I'm gonna drink a little bit. Excuse me a second while I check. Hmm. <laughs> Chase Mountain, just try for this coming election to be a to be a minister, is it? No. Solo one, is a, yeah. I just answered that. Yes, yes, I am. But um, my my kids are my cars. Yeah. AJQ, hello, Chris. Happy New Year. Hey, Happy New Year, man. Okay. Uh, if you really love cars, at least. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, Chase is saying, and I feel like you. Like you really love the E60 or me really love the E60, but was told that the BMW maintenance can be astronomical. Uh, it's all relative, really. 
Um, I've never owned an E60. I would love to own an E60 someday, but um, I've never owned one, so I have no idea about the maintenance. To be honest, uh, I had an E39, and the maintenance was actually quite okay. Con can actually attest to the fact that I think E39's uh, maintenance is really good. Why I love the E60? That's a good question. I just asked it. I shall answer it, okay? I love the E60 because if you look at the timeline of the 5 Series BMW, the E60 looks nothing like its predecessor, and it looks nothing like its successor. If you look at the line, the E60 looks like it came from Mars or Venus and was just plonked into this uh, timeline. Because the, e the F10 actually looks like the logical successor in terms of design to the E39. The E60 looks like nothing like the E39 or its successor, the F10. It looks like it just came out of, of Pluto. Okay, And that's the genius of Chris Bangle. Personally, I think the E60 now looks better than the F10. The F10 looks aged. The F10 looks... Eh. The F10 looks like... <sighs> the E60, you see it going by and you're still like... Whoa. Well, that's just me anyway. So, yeah. But you know what? Chris Bangle is a mad genius. When I met him at the launch of the E60, he said, his words, he designed this car to appeal to the future. <laughs> that's why I say he's a mad genius. He's like George Lucas who couldn't make part one of his Star Wars because what he had envisioned, there was no technology to make it then. Yeah, so he made part three first. Yeah, Chris Bangle designed the E60 to look good in the future. 20 years later, the E60 looks better than the three-year-old F10. Come on, what kind of thinking is that? And then BMW got rid of him. Oh, yo, sorry lah. But yeah, someday I might get an E60 for sure. Okay, let's see. Any more? Let's see more questions here. Uh, what was the best E class? W two one one two three one two four two ten two one two. It's subjective, really. I don't think I'm going to answer that because I like all those except for the two one two. I you know I love the one two three. I had one. I love the one two four. I had one. Now I have another one. Uh, I love the two ten. I don't have one. I might have one soon, or somewhere in the future. Um, two one two. I'm not saying it's a bad car. If you have one. More power to you, baby. But um, too much electronics, too much sensors, too much things. Two one one, two one two, too much stuff. And uh, yeah, because like I said, I lead the bankier life. I have many, many examples, seen many, many examples in my own eyes of uh, stuff that can go wrong with those cars and kind of scare me. So nah, not going to anytime soon. Okay, uh, another hard name to produce to pronounce. Uh, okay, let me get to this one first. AJ says, uh, what mistake do new car buyers make when buying the car? New Buying a new car or a new car buyer buying any car? Okay, buying a new car uh, is already a mistake. <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> You're putting yourself in debt. We, no, I'm so, sorry, sorry, sorry. Buy. You want to buy, buy. You know, I'm not saying don't. You want to buy used, buy a used car. You want to buy new, buy a new car. There's no right or wrong in it. It's all what you want. It's your money. It's your life. Uh, you worked hard. You buy what you want, okay? Uh, I'm never ever going to say, don't buy this car, buy this car. Uh, don't buy this car, buy this car. I'll never say that. And I'll never say, you should buy a used car. You should not buy a, a new car or vice versa. You buy what you want. Not my job to make the decision for you. You buy what you want. You are the one that's paying for it. You're the one that's going to live with it. That's why I always say, go test drive. If you give me a choice and ask which one you should buy, I can't. I tell you, go buy, go buy whichever the one that you like. Go, go test drive all and buy the one that you like. Because I don't want to have the responsibility of, or, 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 you know, having to deal with coming back, somebody coming back to me later and say, oh, yeah, you told me to buy this car. I bought already. You said nice. It's not nice. My taste, your taste. Hey, sorry. Different, really. So that's why I'll ne don't ever, you know, um, email me or, 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 or social media me and ask what car you should buy because I can't tell you. I really, really can't tell you uh, which car to buy. You need to buy it on your own, okay? You need to test drive it, buy it. You like it, buy it straight. What up, okay? Um, so tips on, on uh, parking cars. Somebody asked about, uh, who is this? Giri 2 k Any tips on parking cars with Malaysians? If you can, park it in the shade. If you can't, um, at least get one of those windshield covers. I have every one of my cars, I have one. Uh, at least get one of those windshield covers for the uh, front windshield. And if you don't have a, um, a proper tint at the back, get one for the back as well. Uh, Malaysia's climate is a killer. It's an absolute killer for, for cars, really. So protect it as best you can. 
And that's why I sold my one to six. I don't know why it's so hard for some of you to believe, but that's exactly why I sold my one to six. I couldn't park her in a nice place. And I love that car so much. She was suffering out there. So that's why I interviewed four people before, uh, before selling the one to six. And one of the things I had to know was that she had a good place to park. Um, and now she does. And I'm happy. I really am. And also, now I'm also a little bit worried about the one to four because she's older. Uh, she's a first gen one two four, and I gotta find a good place for her to park. But I'm not selling that car. I'm keeping that one. Uh, that, that's a damn nice car. So, okay, uh, let's see. Yes, the cars will cook under our heat. Yeah, they really will. So try and at least uh, somebody was long time ago asked me should they buy a car cover? Yes and no. Okay, car covers are great. I'm not saying don't buy it, but when it rains and the car cover gets wet, it can actually once it gets hot again and really hot and you don't pull the car cover off to actually let the car cover dry, and the car cover can actually get baked into your car, and it can actually go into the paint. Yes, that's how bad it is. Yes, even those breathable car covers. Don't forget, our climate is unlike any other climate in, in, uh, in many, many parts of the world. Yeah, Our climate, it's not so much the heat, it's the humidity that can actually get into places that you won't believe moisture can get into. It can get into there because it's our humidity. Uh, it's, it's really crazy. That's why when I see people who drive a, a mint condition Alpha Sad or you know, Datsun 510 SSS, any of those cars from that era which have no sound um, rust proofing, no galvanized steel or stainless steel, and they're still in mint condition, I really salute those people because it is so difficult to keep an old car, classic car in our climate pristine. Um, but do your best. If you can, at least get park it under a shade somewhere. Never park it under one of those tree, the Angsana trees with the small leaves. <laughs> if you've ever parked a car underneath an Angsana tree, the one, the tree with the yellow flowers and the tiny little leaves that look like a tic tac, flat tic tac, you will know what I'm talking about because those leaves get everywhere. So you might think, oh, nice shade, big Angsana tree. You come back, your car is a different color because of all those leaves. So yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't park it there. Uh, meanwhile, the low is saying, meanwhile, the safety system in my wajah is the ABS. <laughs> yes, the Aku brakes and Diri. Yep, yep, yep. And Cedric doesn't like two car cars with too much electronics as well. Me too. I'm so happy my laser has got wind-up windows in front as well. Okay, uh, let's see. Moving along. Uh, Chase says, the BMW E60 is like the BMW of 2025. Yeah, I agree. That car is going to look good and contemporary. Not just good, but contemporary for many years to come. Yeah. You could see my wife's shadow just now. Dude, dude, come on, man. Don't do that, stalker. You guys kill me. <laughs> Jack, Jack, Corolla, Mazda 3 best. That's entirely up to you, man. Really, honestly, it's entirely up to you. Um, to me, they're both good. It's the one that you want. It's the one that you want. Darren saying, my mom's Viva 660 is all manual. Yeah, there you go. Manual gearbox, four doors, manual windows, no ABS, no airbag. She dies like a real person. <laughs> Sorry. It's just that bumper sticker I saw the other day, which I want to go get made at Motorsports Playground. No airbags. We die like real men. <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. I really did. Uh, okay. I want to buy a Waja. Uh, should I buy the 1.6 Mitsubishi or Campro 1.6? Ooh. I can't, I can't comment on the Campro 1.6. Maybe Con can. Oh no, Con's is, is that is Con's a Campro? Yeah, I can't remember. Anyway, um, I love the the Waja that I have, which is the uh, MMC. The they call it the Mitsubishi Waja. Yeah, it's weird. If you if you key in uh, Muda looking for a Waja, um, or if you key in looking for a Mitsubishi, you'll find a whole bunch of Wajas because they say it's the Mitsubishi Waja. But yeah, um, I love it. I think it's great. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, Chase Mountain 126 is Saddam Hussein, Michael Jackson, <laughs> king of the S-Class. Actually, the uh, 126 is lovely, but I think the king of the S-Class is, to me, is still the 140. It's crazy. I mean, that car is, like I said, unnecessarily big. They made it big because they had to make it bigger than the predecessor, which was the 126. And they just made it too big. Because if you notice, after that, uh, the S-Class became smaller. Yeah? Uh, so it's like the 140 is like the last of the big tank-like Mercedes Benzes. And yeah, I still want one because, like I said, they had the balls to do that. I should have the balls to buy it, right? So anyway, 
Uh, Mitesh, is the E65 a bad car? As people say, I have no idea, Mitesh. Never owned an E65. Um, so I have really, really no clue. Maybe somebody here who has one can, can, actually, uh, can actually tell you. Uh, Mazda 3 rear seat, very narrow. Yeah, you see, the thing about three, rear seats, though, it doesn't really bother me because uh, my wife has her own car. And when we go out, she, we use her car. Um, I'm the only one usually in my own car. So uh, that's why I bought the Satria because I don't need back doors. Uh, nobody sits behind. At the most, somebody, one of my buddies who's going out with me for a little, for Yamcha or whatever, might sit in the front passenger seat. But usually I'm alone in my car. So space was never really a constraint. Concern, which begs the question, then why did I have a 126? Well, you'd be amazed that the interior of the 126 is actually quite small. <laughs> you know why? Because they've got big seats, big front seats, big rear seat. And that's why the interior space looks small. Actually, it's big, but the seats are huge. And um, car manufacturers long, long, long ago cheated everybody by saying their interior is very big. But no, the interiors have remained pretty much the same. They've shrunk the size of the seats. There we go. So, let's see. <laughs> the shadow was there. Yeah, thanks. So okay. So anyway, see if I've um, I'm gonna give it another. Wow, guys, it's late. It's already after midnight. Oh my goodness! And you're all still here with me. Well, most of you anyway. And it's been going on two two hours twenty one minutes. This this is crazy. I thought I was just gonna be on for like half an hour, forty five minutes. And you're also here. Ah, please do up a one forty. Uh, we'll be most happy to grab it from you afterwards. Thank you, Albert. <laughs> Uh, do I miss working in marketing? No, Alvin. Oh, sorry, Arvid. Sorry, sorry, sorry. See, my eyes are starting to play tricks on me. No, Arvin, I don't. Um, I'm very, very happy doing what I'm doing now. I, this is what I've always wanted to do, uh, really. But uh, And I'm just so happy that I managed to achieve it before, while I was still upright and not six feet under. Yeah, cool. Yes, Dylan, it's already 12 midnight. I can't believe how fast time went. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mitish, they've shrunk the size of the seats, assuming people have become midgets. Yes, but cars have grown. Have you noticed? Look at a picture of a classic Mini and a new Mini. A freaking new Mini. There's nothing Mini about it except its name. Take a original 911 and put it next to a current 911. They're huge. Fiat 500. The, the 600? The old Fiat 600. Put it next to a new Fiat. Uh, whatever. They're huge. Cars have just grown. And you know what? I've not seen any 15-foot-tall humans. I don't think we have grown that much. So, yeah. I don't know why... Actually, I do know. Yeah. I hate to admit, I do know why cars have grown physically. It's all the active and passive safety systems and regulation systems and new regulations for safety and all that have packed into the car, making them bigger. Look at the A-pillar size or B-pillar size of an E30 compared to a, the latest uh, 3 Series. They're like twice the size of the width of the uh, original. So yeah, it's all it's all safety. It's all about safety. Ah, okay. Uh, Darwis is asking about an A4 2.0 TFSI B9. I've never been much of an Audi fan. I think for, for Audis, you need to talk to Bobby. Bobby is a big Audi fan. You know, he used to have a really nice wagon. So um, the only Audi that has ever appealed to me is... Unobtainium, the Quattro, uh, the one that they used in Group B. I, that's the one I want. And as usual, there's no way I'm going to get one. I know there's one in Malaysia because I saw it at uh, No Equal Cars and Coffee. Or is it Tea and Tires? <laughs> cars and Coffee is uh, Juru Penang. It's uh, Chu Yang's. Uh, it, was, it was No Equal Tea and Tires, not Cars and Coffee. Uh, yeah, I saw a Quattro there. and It was gorgeous. It's in the video, uh, my coverage of the uh, event. And... Uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to afford one. So, yeah. So, you know what? Um, not just yet anyway. I've not really considered any Audis. Okay. Sorry, I've got to go up again. There's a few few more. Um, I'll take a few more questions. And then I think we'll call it a night, guys. Because, wow. Going on two and a half hours. And I didn't even realize. Yeah. Okay. On the topic of ground uh, downgrade road tax, what would you do if you wanted to buy a car, but the car was low at road tax done legally? By the previous owner, example 5.0, but now only pay two. I would go and check it out first. Yeah, I would definitely go and check it out first personally and not take some runner's word for it. Oh, sudah buat, sudah buat. No problem, no problem. Semua boleh. 
I would go and check it out first. And uh, if it's done legally, then why not? I mean, if it's a, a loophole in the system where you're allowed to actually do it, capitalize on it. Like classic status, it's legal. Um, it's, a, it's a system in place that's legal. Capitalize on it. Do it. Yeah. Like uh, Aisina, do it. <laughs> if it's allowed, do it. You know, why not? Okay, what? Arvin's asking, what were there any transferable skills going into YouTube? Transferable skills. This is exactly what I've been doing for the last, um, if you're talking about me, this is exactly what I've been doing since 1990, uh, early 90s, 1992. Motoring journalism. I've stopped, right? I've, uh, I've not, I'm, okay, one thing. I don't write as much as I used to, but um, I'm still making videos on the automotive scene, uh, on the automotive industry, and uh, still enjoying what I'm doing. Um, don't miss marketing, don't miss advertising. I used to be in that in that part, yeah. But um, what I've been doing now for the last uh, 25, wow, shit, can't count that, 22 years. Yeah, very happy doing what I'm doing. So not gonna, not regretting, not regretting at all. Talking to you is like talking to Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> wow, compliment of the day. Thank you, thank you very much. Jeremy Clarkson has, happens to be one of... Uh, uh, my idols when I was when I was first starting out in this business, and I still think he's an amazing, amazing. Do you know he can he can do? He's not just motoring. I mean, he does motoring and he does motoring really well, but he's also an author and he's written books about motoring and he's written stuff that's non-motoring, and he can also host documentaries that have nothing to do with motoring. He's just such a good presenter. Um, he's so entertaining. He's he's like, I don't I don't know how I don't know how to put it. It's like, uh, it's like he's first and foremost a very personable entertainer who also happens to be a total car nut and uh, also happens to have other interests. I think he did a documentary on the history of Great Britain's shipping something industry or something like that. Nothing to do with automotive, but it was so entertaining. And I think it's all in the presentation. Uh, the way he talks, the way he presents himself, the way he presents the topic he's talking about. It's, he can make a sewing group or how to knit, how to knit a, 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 a jersey or, or a jacket or how to knit a sweater. He could make a documentary on how to knit a sweater entertaining. And you would watch it because it's Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah, amazing. I saw him on stage once at uh, Earl's Court in the UK. Um, and I'm now I'm trying to think actually what was the event? Uh, it was the um, it was at Earl's Court. It was in the UK, and it was uh, it was not the Goodwood Festival of Speed because that was at Goodwood. Uh, it was some car show. It was a car show. Of course, it was a car show. I can't remember the name of the car show, but uh, Jeremy Clarkson gets on stage, and everybody in that hall who were earlier looking at uh, Ferraris and Maseratis and Lamborghinis and Porsches and everything else, everybody left the stalls and went straight to the stage. And he kept them in rapt attention and laughing their heads off, almost falling onto the floor for 45 minutes off the cuff. No script. He just got on there and he started talking. And he kept us in stitches for 45 minutes. He could be a stand-up comedian if he wanted, really. He is just so entertaining. And uh, yeah, really. Unbelievable. Many people don't like him. Many people think he's obnoxious. Many people think he's an arrogant prick. But hey, he's Jeremy Clarkson. He's made a name for himself and uh, he's doing what he loves. And that, that's it. I, 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 wish, I wish I was half as popular. <laughs> ah, okay. So moving along. Okay. I wish to own a Satria with an injection or ka, ka urat. Kaurat. Carb. Carburetor. Okay, 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 okay. Get an injection. Uh, nothing wrong with carburetors. My laser is a carburetor. Um, but get an injection solely because there are not many people out there now who can rebuild a carburetor, who can tune a carburetor, who can break down a carburetor and service it. Really sad. It's a, it's a losing trade. It's a, it's a vanishing trade. Uh, Abang Ramli is one of the last few who can actually do this, who can actually strip down a carburetor and uh, put it back together again, retune it, and make it like it was new. And this trade, uh, this um, expertise is fast vanishing, really. Like Wireman, uh, Mr. Lee, my Wireman, he's still so good at what he does, but 
it's a vanishing trade. Sadly, nobody wants to learn. And once he stops doing it, that's it. That's it. That's the end. So get get a fuel injection one. My Satria 1.3 is a fuel injection. Get us get a fuel injection one. My laser BC, um my laser uh, hatchback <laughs> 1.6GL is a carburetor. Thankfully, the carburetor is still good. Uh, what worries me is my Katana 750. Uh, the, the laser is single carb. The Katana 750 is four cylinder, four carb. One carb per cylinder. Uh, try balancing that. Thankfully, my bike Sifu is uh, just amazing. And uh, he keeps my bike uh, he keeps my bike going, really. Otherwise, it'd be at the bottom of a mining pool by now, really. Right. Oh, so moving along. Let's see. Yeah, so Satria, yes, injection. Try and get an injection one. Mm, Johan Rosli. Chris, when do you want to review the famous Matt Black Vitara? Okay, bro. We should have Saturday. I think I think it's about time. Yeah. Yeah. Unless I can find a Jimny, then sorry, your, your Vitara has to take a back seat. <laughs> Yay. Juan, uh, Wan Chen, Wan Chen. Hi, you are Malaysian Hoovy Garage. Thank you. Thank you so much. I wish I had Tyler's budget though. Tyler's got seems to have an inexhaustible budget for buying uh, hoop tees. I wish I had that. Hey, Tiban, how are you? Um, just got here. I'm almost done, bro. I've been up here for two hours and thirty-one minutes. It's been a, uh, it's been amazing. So, you know what? I think. Uh, thank you so much. I'm still a hundred more than a hundred people here. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday night with me. It's 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 been really amazing. And we got to do this again sometime. Uh, stay tuned to the community section. Uh, once MCO is over and we are allowed to drive more freely, I will shop, organize a drive. Um, maybe organize just a meetup while waiting to go for a drive. Uh, we can do lots of stuff. Again, so sorry for the lack of videos this last week. Been really mad with the E12 and the 124 and other other cars. So, but more to come. More to come. Yeah, it's uh, it's been awesome. Really, you guys rock. You you rock. You rock. You're right. And uh, thank you for being here. Saturday night. My goodness, it's already, what, 12.15. We've been at it for two hours and 32 minutes. This has got to be some kind of record. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for spending Saturday with me. You guys are awesome. Um, I'm sorry I've not been able to reply all the comments. I apologize. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a lot. And this, this, there's something wrong with my mouse. Yeah. It, 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 it keeps jumping up and down. But we'll do this again, and if I missed you the first time, I'll get you the second time, okay? Uh, so that's it, I guess. Cool. Thank you so much for, the, uh, for being here. It's been a pleasure. Stay tuned. More to come. Take care, you all. Good night. God bless. And stay safe out there. Yeah, numbers still high. Stay safe, yeah? Get yourself one of these. Wear it every day. <laughs> I still love this, man. I think this is so cool. Yes. Take care, you all. Good night. Bye.